Welcome to Revolver Live, the podcast that says forget the past. The future belongs to the nerds. Revolver Live is a conversational podcast with six revolving topics. You can be a part of the show. Nerd. I'm one too. (laughs) (laughs) Revolver Live is a conversational podcast with six revolving topics. You guys can be a part of the show by submitting your topics for consideration at revolvergamescast at gmail.com. We go live every Sunday, except for today. At 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash Lately, Brian. it's been like every third Sunday. <laughs> Tuesday, Monday. <laughs> Never know when we'll go live. Just, Bucket, it's, man. It's, it's like a Russian surprise roulette. podcast. The, yeah. the, random, the randomly timed video is then shared on YouTube. At Briar's <laughs> YouTube channel and my channel, Beastly Gamer. If you're unable to see the live feed or, or the video format, check us out in podcast form on Podbeans, iTunes, or wherever you like to listen. Thank you guys so much. Welcome back to Revolver Live, episode 45. And uh, we are sponsored by On Air PC. Yo, thank you, On Air PC, for all you do. We really all appreciate the sponsorship. I don't have the ad read up and ready to go. I can't but wait we to see you at Guardian I'll Con on your PC hugs. <laughs> yeah, Lots that's going to be fun. He's building a PC uh, in the in the DCP booth. Oh, it's gonna be man. Great. Yeah. But, but before, are you have it ready now? Because... The first thing I want to say is congratulations uh, to Breyer and the rest of the DCP crew oh. for raising $105,000 for St. Jude uh, Children's Hospital. And uh, they did it all, playing games, goofing off and having fun, and, and talking to the Destiny community. It really touches my heart. I told Breyer pre-show to see someone, you know, a group of people, so altruistic and, and, and selfless doing something for so many people who need it. Uh, you know, as a parent of five children, I always pray that they're healthy, and so many people uh, have children who are fighting illnesses and fighting disease, and to have people out there like you guys, Briar, to have people who are, you know, still streaming and and, and dedicating and, and donating their time and their efforts towards it is a huge blessing to humanity, to mankind, and and, and personally for me, and, and I'm sure for many, many people watching us, thank you guys so much. That's fucking awesome. Because it was, it was a crazy stream, too. Like, it... Everything that could go wrong went wrong. Like my internet, I was I was hosting the the stream. My internet cut out. Right, we had to like switch over. I had all the overlay set up. It looked really nice and really pretty. We had to switch over. Tefty wasn't ready at all. He didn't have the overlay or nothing, so he just dragged the Skype window over into the gameplay screen. At like, I don't know. It was we had a four hour block for. For like three and a half hours in, we were at like forty five thousand dollars, and we had a stretch goal of a hundred thousand dollars that um, Pope Bear and Patrick would get matching heart tattoos on their butt. I thought somebody was going to shave, shave a sideburn off or something. No, that that happened to like fifty, <laughs> or like thirty k or something, twenty k. That was yeah. a that was an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, like. It literally, we had earned like forty five thousand dollars, and uh, Pope asked Patrick, "Hey, what if we changed the goal for the tattoos to a hundred thousand dollars, which is more than double what we had, right?" So it's never, nobody thought it was going to happen. Thirty minutes left in the in the show. Oh my god! After three and a half hours, and the community just showed up, like just absolutely pounded. The last twenty minutes of that live stream was just Pope screaming out, screaming out. Uh, um, donations. Patrick looking scared as hell. I can imagine. <laughs> like it was just absolutely well, friends crazy. Friends like man. you guys. So are you telling me that all this? I mean, it was going well. You guys got a surge of money once yeah. people committed to fucking their lives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. So like, it, it was really cool. Like Briar said, he took the time to put up all the overlays, make everything look real nice. The stream went down, and it was like catching Led Zeppelin in, like, a garage jam band setup. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, it was all these, it was all these, you know, some of the biggest, you know, Destiny names, you know, because DCP carries, what are the kids saying a lot of days? They got a lot of clout, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they got that clout. So, uh, it's, it was just really cool, man. It was like, you don't need the fanciness to it. Like, you guys showed up. You brought the positivity, and the community followed that up like big time. And GGs to you guys. And it's still going on right now, but yeah, man, was that hype, dude! Like I was listening to that in my car, and it was like it was hard not to get excited about it. You know what I mean? Even just as a viewer. 
Somebody the, took a screenshot at the exact moment that we realized that Pope and and Patrick were going to, in fact, have <laughs> to get but matching butt tattoos. Yeah, what are they going to get? Hearts, hearts. Actually, this each one of them worst. is going to get a half a heart so that they have yeah. to touch butts. Yep, like the keychain. <laughs> make a full heart. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's so, so good. I'm so there's right a now, there's I'm, a screenshot. I'm, I'm my wife. She's there's, in that living room fucking dying right now. Right? <laughs> there's a screenshot of the exact moment where Patrick and I both realized what was about to happen. And I am like, uh, like, there's just absolute pure glee on my face. And Patrick is <laughs> as depressed as I've ever seen him. <laughs> I haven't oh, seen no. him that depressed since Hunter Throwing Knives got oh, nerfed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It hasn't cut that deep since Throwing Knives got nerfed. Right? And, oh, my God. Yeah. But yeah, that live stream is still going. That goes oh. till Thursday evening. I think uh, uh, Professor Broman is going to wrap it up. So they've already raised one point five million dollars. Probably more by now. Last time I checked, it was a few hours ago. One point five million dollars they've raised. But I mean, this is going to St. Jude's, man. This is a huge thing, right? Th- these are people who they they take care of kids who have cancer and other life threatening diseases, and they do it for free. If you if if your kid gets admitted to to St. Jude, then your whole family comes to St. Jude. You stay there for free. You eat for free. Everything is taken care of by St. Jude. The whole the whole point is, you know, let's focus on getting this kid well and not have to worry about bills or food or lodging or any of that stuff. St. Jude takes care of all of it. It's a amazing. It's an amazing cause, and they absolutely kill it because they've reduced childhood cancer or they've increased childhood cancer survival rates by like huge amounts. When they first started, the the survival rate for childhood cancer was 20%, and now it's 80%. And that's a lot of that is due to their research, and they share that research for free. They don't yeah. they don't sell it. They don't you know try and like you know make a profit off of that research. They just put it out there for free, so kids across the world can benefit from it, and adults, frankly. Uh, it's it's an absolutely amazing thing. So like if you haven't gone over to the Guardian Con charity. Uh, the Guardian Con stream, it's awesome. Even if you throw a dollar at it, you know, that's a dollar that just helps a kid survive. $32 will run the whole hospital for one second. One so second. you can, with a $32 donation, you can run that entire hospital for a second. They're not going to make you, let you make any decisions, Beastly, just to let you know. That's all. <laughs> but running it, what, is that, what does that encompass? I mean, no, I mean, like you, you're funding the operation yeah. of that hospital for a minute. Or for a second. For a second. Thirty-two. That's how thirty-two much. dollars. So that's one second donation. just went by. That's how much money that it takes to keep that place operational. <laughs> right. Uh, real quick, I'm sorry uh, for anyone who's hearing that loud noise. It's I think my neighbor secretly watches the show whenever we we come to do the live show. Somehow he hops on his riding mower and rides around. <laughs> and kudos to the guys who are telling me to go knock him the fuck out. I could. <laughs> But he knows where I live, so that'd be that'd be a pretty bad one. Uh, and and to Hugo Rune, he said, "Beastly, tell him you'll do it for him if he stops." I just got <laughs> off work. Fuck that. I, but uh, truest apologies. It's not my fault. I wish that this wasn't happening right now. It's not like he's in this office back. I mean, he's, <laughs> is he mowing your lawn? He's in this big ass. It looks like a diner. Have you seen Jurassic Park? <laughs> it's like the blades on the bottom of the T Rex's feet, and it looks like he's riding that thing. I don't know what's going don't on. Don't move. Its vision's based on movement, bro. Like, I know. <laughs> Life finds a way. Yo, uh, I'm excited because I'm getting a riding lawnmower tomorrow, Ooh. and I don't have to push mow anymore. Wow! And Does it have I'm a cup holder? Sure, oh, pretty awesome! Sure, pretty sure it's got a cup holder. Oh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you just need to have an ashtray. That uh, is the life of luxury. That is and, it right there. Yep, yeah, that is a cup holder on the lawnmower. Like I get why everyone mows their lawn around here every other day. I get it. Yeah, man, it's an awesome thing to do when you've got a cup holder and a riding lawnmower. Like you were literally <laughs> just chilling and drinking. Maybe a tasty beverage, you know, just That's put it out there. Bullshit. Maybe it's even alcoholic. You know, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's yeah. a beer. Maybe, well, maybe yeah. it's a Zima. I don't know what your pre- preferences are, but <laughs> I can tell you that even with a Zima, mowing the lawn is much more fun. <laughs> yeah. And I may not even be using it as a cup holder. Maybe a bong holder. We'll see. Oh. I don't know. It depends on what time of day it is. Switching it up. I've seen Setting trends. Riding home on one of those things. 
and they had drinks and all kinds of stuff. Just be careful, Willie. You know, <laughs> don't get sidetracked and end up in the neighbor's yard or something. End up playing Pokemon Go and just like veering off, mowing everyone else's yard, not <laughs> I, paying guys, attention. I got to catch running this. around the neighborhood so, but, catching uh, Pokemon. I made a, prom- I made a promise to some, to some great friends on Saturday. Uh, <laughs> I ended up doing the other podcast, I do Beastly Thoughts, but afterwards, a, a group of incredible people got together with me and braved the storm. We only played for about an hour. It was so fast, but we went through Crota's, We went through uh, the Leviathan Raid. I was about to say Crota's Lair. Uh, I want to give a shout-out to Maximus, 1455. Of course, the great Hugo Rune, 79. I know Extreme, that guy. Extreme Dan 1. Yo, I know man. that guy, too. Dave, and my betrothed, my beloved... Peanut Kate 516. It was so fast. These guys were incredible. I got more Ingrams and more chests than I've ever seen uh, going through this raid. I'm telling you, man, this, Brian, these are the people you need to fuck with when it comes to Destiny because they know every crevice, every crack, you know, all the secret passageways, stuff that I've never seen before. Yeah, yeah. We, like to, we like to penetrate those crevices oh my God. of the Leviathan. It, it was so <laughs> She's like my cable provider. <laughs> <laughs> and Kate and I talked about it after we did it because we got off and we went and had you know dinner and hung out and I was like we hit like ten chests going through that place. Oh and yeah, so you get sweet. huge gains going through the raid, huge gains. It and was then, really really awesome and they really helped us and, and walked us through it and taught us a lot and man it was just really incredible and and thank you so much to all you guys. I can't wait to get together. Hugo's in the, in the chat. He's always here with us. Stream and, Dan's uh, in there too. He's the man. And, Dan, of course. Yeah, he's the underbelly master, apparently. That's what I like. Tefty's really good at that. Dan he's got was like awesome. that, that map quest when you go down under and he knows his way through. It was really funny. I get turned around. Hugo said beastly. I just Dan follow people. Dan's, you Dan's, tell me where I to just, go. I follow people <laughs> and like stop when you get to the Cabal Kush room with all the hydroponics and yeah. stuff. Like, Take a little sample break. I'll, I'll, I'll catch up. <laughs> I'll catch fill up my, later. <laughs> fill in my exotic armor Pull pockets. Pull me through when you get to the door. <laughs> Get a pinch. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, those guys are great guys. You know you, what you gotta do now, Beastly, is you gotta go into you gotta go do the uh, the two raid layers, man. There, mm. I think actually, uh, is it what was the first raid layer, Wilson? I can't remember the name of it Eater right of now. Worlds? Eater of Worlds. I think Eater of Worlds is one of the most visually stunning things ever in video games. Like it's that amazing. Well, listen, from the guys uh, who I just mentioned, Briar, stop being such a pussy and come back to PlayStation to play with your friends. No, I'm not doing that. Some of these guys don't even have a PC, and they met you through Destiny, and you brought them into this world, you brought them into DC, <laughs> and then you abandoned them like a fucking bitch. No, they turned 18, and he said, get the fuck out of the nest. Get out there. Go be guardians. Do your no. thing. <laughs> come back and play with us, Briar. Daddy's going to PC. I'll, I'll play <laughs> PV. PVE for sure. I, I don't have any problem playing PVE on PS4. PVP though. Okay, Man, let's, listen let's, to this. We're going out to Guardian let's do a raid Con this week sometime. Uh, I mean, this isn't a great week for me. <laughs> in, in a week, two weeks, three weeks. Just, I want yeah, you to get sure. into it live I mean, on the show. I'm 100%, I'm 100% into it, man. I, okay. The week we get back, I'll, I'll be happy to do it. But Guardian Con, so we're going to, me and Wilson are both going to Guardian Con on Thursday. Um, and actually, there's going to be a PVP 1v1 tournament. That I got enrolled in against my will. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, and it's on oh, PlayStation. I'm betting everything on Briar. Everything dude, I got. That is dude. a bad bet, man. <laughs> what are the odds? What are listen to this. Spread? In the tournament rules, it specifically says that you cannot use another co- controller input besides the scuff that is provided. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> I was like, well, shit. <laughs> so, do you guys have any plans? Of what you're going to do the moment you see each other. I can just, in my mind's eye, I can just see you guys make eye contact. And I'm going to, I'm going to go in for the hug. Never seen you looking as lovely as you did tonight. I'm going to hold it uncomfortably so long. Like to the point where like people are like, do these guys, uh, is this a relationship? And then my right hand first, but then followed by my left hand is going to slowly slide down to the small of the back. And as and my is- pinky crests <laughs> the top of his butt. He's going to look at me and be like, is this a thing? I'll be like, oh, yeah, this it's is a totally thing. A and then I just go full on butt grab. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. I put a lot of thought into it, Beastly. It was super <laughs> sensual. That was, like those, that was like those steamy novels that like everyone's mom used to read back in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> it was like Fabio on the front. Like, I really thought about it. 
Like, how's me, this guy Wilson, making into so many? Butter. Yeah. <laughs> how's he making onto every cover of every woman's novel? Like I don't know, man. That was a that was a thing, man, for a long time. Fabio huge... was like a famous dude because he was on the cover of every romance every, novel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then he became the czar of I can't believe it's not butter. Uh-huh. Spray. Yeah. <laughs> didn't something fucked up happen to him at like an amusement park or something like he got hit by like some flying geese and it, like fucked his face up did you hear about that a long time ago <laughs> no. yeah yeah really? and then he like sued the amusement park because he's like oh my face like you know like which i mean i get it i'd probably sue him too fuck it that's the american dream anymore but like it it uh yeah fabio got drilled by some birds on a roller coaster man yikes Dude, pour one out for Fabio. He was even on the cover of was it Ghouls and Ghosts on the NES, or Ghosts and Goblins? He was on the cover of an NES game. He was on the cover of an NES Are you game. Serious? It wasn't Ghosts and Goblins. Yeah, hold on. I used to have it. I'm gonna. I mean, it, All right. I still got it. I mean, I used to have it. Where's yeah. Gary when you need him? <laughs> yeah, well, no. Oh, and, and we like to apologize. We're, we're going to get back to it. It's been a couple of weeks. We haven't really been consistent because of conflict schedules and, and, and things going on with you know people leaving their, their homes and going to Guardian Con and whatnot. But the Cisco facts will return. He, <laughs> he was on uh, uh, the cover of Iron Sword. Iron Sword. He had the big... He had the big sword and then like the little tiny like headband and then of course the wrap around the biceps and he was all like Man, I don't even recognize the name of that game. I'd I'd Yeah. Let him save me. What a what a man. (laughs) No beard though. No beard though. You know, Look, I don't mind being saved by an attractive man. I just he has to be somebody fucking saves me. me. (laughs) He'd have to be bigger than me. If you're just, you know, a small guy and you're no, motherfucker, go get Andre the Giant. I don't care if it's you. Tanya Harding. Is if I'm in trouble, I want to get rescued. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking. I don't care if it's rescued. Lorena Bobbitt. <laughs> Somebody save my ass. <laughs> I haven't to- I haven't heard that reference since like the '90s, and we were just talking about it on the job site today. The whole Tanya uh, really? Harding thing. Yeah, <laughs> weird. There's a new movie out about her. I really? think it's called I Tanya. Yeah. I think it's on Netflix or something. Uh, Margot Robbie plays her. Which she looks nothing like her. I hear she did a pretty decent role, a job playing the role. But and she's also a freak. She uh, she released an incredible Tanya Harding uh, or Margot sex, Robbie sex tape documentary. No, I'm talking about uh, a sex tape on ice. How do they do it wasn't that? on ice. It's on a van. <laughs> Oh, now, okay. that's the kind of ice that capade was, I would like to go when see. Sex tapes ruin your career. And now they turn you into an icon for the children to worship, like Kim Kardashian. <laughs> But but back then it was like oh my god she showed her vagina on TV and her career was completely fucked like she was in the video great video by the way the cameraman good lighting right we talked about lighting earlier I'm talking about the good aspects of the, of the who was the chick who the one who got hit in the knee Nancy Kerrigan yeah Nancy Kerrigan so apparently it wasn't even Tanya Harding it was like her boyfriend slash security yeah. guard at the so time he, Joey Buttafuoco huh Brian was it was his name Joey Buttafuoco. <laughs> or is that somebody else? Joey Buttafuoco. No, Joey Buttafuoco. He's another cr- criminal. What the hell was going on? We're trapped in the fucking early '90s, <laughs> late '80s crime spree. Now I have to find out what Joey Buttafuoco did. Damn it! <laughs> what did Joey Buttafuoco Man, do? See, it, it was we, spelled B U T T A F U O. Twice we've needed Gary Diaz talents. Yeah. <laughs> Look at us on Google like amateurs over here. Yeah, it's, the first thing I see on Wikipedia <laughs> is shooting incident. So he's evidently not uh, the boyfriend. Go- who Google's took been banned from the show. Cut his mic. Cut his mic. <laughs> <laughs> Google. <laughs> oh, what would geez. Joey Buttafuoco do? <laughs> what would Joey Buttafuoco do? <laughs> What happened when you when you this is what happens when you Google on Revolver Live. This is why it's it gets bad. really bad, really bad. Uh, <laughs> of course and, and it does. Gary would have already Googled all this information and had oh, yeah. follow. We'd have we'd have, have multiple facts about Joey, but if you go by now, <laughs> you have a whole autobiography of him brought up. <laughs> Gary is missed, yeah, for sure, man. Absolutely. Gary is super missed. We love you, Gary. We love you, Gary. So, should we get into our topics? Yeah, we got some pretty fun ones. Uh, yeah. Uh, first, let's say uh, thank you to On Air PC. I've already lost the link again. Just don't lose your internet. On Air PC is all about helping you. <laughs> oh, 
On Air PC is all about helping you get started in streaming, podcasting, or gaming. Let us help you build your dreams today. Give them a call at 330-850-1525. I'm really excited. They're actually going to be down at Guardian Con this weekend building PCs at the at the DCP booth, uh, which I'm I think it's going to be fun, man. I'm definitely going to mess with them. I'm not going to lie. Uh, There's going to be some hijinks in that booth. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about coming up and just distracting him. Like, every time he gets ready to reach down in there, be like, so, like, you know, asking him random questions. So, what's she doing there? Like, this should be fun. Briar's going to be, like, meeting people. He's, like, hiding like, parts PC, and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, PC parts. Ugh. Just put shit in my pocket and walking away. <laughs> this card go right he's got a big bulge in his shirt pocket <laughs> don't look at me <laughs> okay uh Breyer, i don't know what news you were following back in uh the night the late 80s and 90s but joey uh-huh. botafuco yeah was an auto body shop owner from long island he's best known for having a sexual relationship with the minor amy fisher now 43 oh amy fisher that's right who oh. subsequently shot his wife mary joe botafuco botafuco in the face <laughs> I can't laugh and say that. I'm so sorry. It's just it's a weird word. Why did they have like so? I used to have the Joey Buttafuoco pants. Why were those called Buttafuoco pants? Like, do you know what I'm talking about? What do Buttafuoco pants look like? I gotta. I'll send you. Do they I'll have elastic bands around the waist and the so, ankles? Okay, hear me out. Hear me out. Yes, and like I I kind of kind of MC Hammer pants without like the parachute action. Yeah, but like they had designs on them. Now think of the opening credits of Saved by the Bell. All the little, um, what is it like neon symbols and stuff mm-hmm. that would play. Yeah, yeah. had all that stuff in patterns all over it. When I was a kid, I was all about those pants. Yeah, you those are comfy, man. Because yeah. I'm by the bed. <laughs> yeah. dude, we are hella '90s today. My goodness. <laughs> Thank you, Don, our PC for sponsoring this podcast. <laughs> and, and keeping us in the '90s. Thank you. Can't wait to meet you. Guardian Con, it's gonna be great. <laughs> so, what first topic do we want to get into after that on air PC Saved by the Bell shout out? I think it's uh, time for an intervention, actually. Oh, God. Um, I've, uh, it's come to my attention that you've relapsed, Big Dick Willie, Sweet Dick Willie. Yes. Oh. Yeah, Big Dick Willie. <laughs> What's happened since I've seen you guys? So, I think uh, we're going uh, into my relapse topic. Um, into uh, Pokemon Go. Yeah, yeah, dude. Are, yeah, it is know. my new jam. It is <laughs> awesome. So in the couple weeks that I've been playing it, I've walked like 65, 70 miles. And oh like so, I'll say five, I'll say like 15 ish have been cheesed in the vehicle. <laughs> like because once you get going a certain speed, it doesn't count. But anyway, a lot of things have changed in uh, Pokemon Go for the better that have me playing a lot again. So if you don't know anything about Pokemon Go, um, here's a brief interview. <clears throat> so right at the beginning, you're prompted to pick one of three teams. Red, yellow, blue. We'll keep it simple. Valor, Mystic, or Instinct. Um, and it is a game that accesses your GPS. You walk around and you have like a augmented reality version of your GPS and little Pokemon will pop up and you click on it and you get to like spin your ball and throw it and get a little curveball and you get little bonuses that help you catch it easier. But that was pretty much it at the beginning. Um, yeah, there were eggs, little things you could stop at, like little landmarks uh, that they call Pokestops. And you go to them, and you spin them, and you get items things like that that help you catch more Pokemon and stuff. And that was basically the extent of it. Like, um, they had gyms, which you couldn't really do much with them. Like, your team could go take over a gym and post their own Pokemon up in there so that people from other teams could come in and battle them and take it over, earn prizes, things. But a lot has changed, man. So now they've added, um, first of all, they're up to Generation 3, of Pokemon. So right now there's like 375 ish unique Pokemon that you can collect. Um, there's a weather system now. So like whatever weather is outside could potentially, um, take part in what kind of Pokemon you see. It could affect their level. So So like like if it's raining out, there might be different Pokemon out. (laughs) Yeah, and they're weather boosted as well. So, like, water types will be boosted Ooh, during the rain weather, which means they spawn at like higher... Pikachu, too? Since there's electricity? Yeah, yeah. Like So, like, um, if 
their weather boosted, they could spawn in at like five levels higher and stuff like that. So they have like a higher CP that you catch them at. But they've added these things called research tabs, which I think have been the most interesting. So they're little, you go to a Pokestop, you spin it, you get a research tab, which is basically like a quest. It could be catch 10 Pokemon. It could be a evolve a water, grass type, whatever Pokemon. It could be hatch an egg, which you incubate these eggs that you get from spinning Pokestops or receiving gifts from your friends because they've added friendship now and, and gift sending and things like that. So you can get these eggs and hatch them after walking two, five, seven, or 10 kilometers. And they hatch into a random Pokemon within that loot pool or whatever. Um, so the research tasks give you rewards like Pokeballs, berries, which make it easier to catch them, <clears throat> things like that. Um, but on top of that, they added where if you do seven, if you, when you do your first one a day, you get a stamp. And after seven for that month, there's a legendary Pokemon that spawns in when you do that. So like this month, it's Snorlax. So I got a couple Snorlax and I was kind of sad because when, when I filled mine in today, I wanted to go take a picture of him on the park bench, like all blah, like all sprawled out on the park bench. Because you could tap into your phone and the Pokemon will show up, but it'll have like the real world behind it. So you can right, do like this, AR, like, right? Yeah, you can do these augmented AR reality. pictures, augmented reality pictures. And like there's some really funny ones on Twitter. Uh, like someone will be reacting to something else, but there'll be like a Pokemon there. And uh, but Basically, uh, they have these research tabs now. There's raids. So, like, randomly at a gym, an egg will pop in, and you have an hour to get there, and the egg will hatch. And it's, like, one of <clears throat> three different leveled eggs, pink, yellow, and then, like, a platinum. And then within those colored eggs, there can be two to three tiers of difficulty bosses. And it's all these different Pokemon that are, like, really hard to find. Some common, depending on where you live. But basically, like, you show up, and I think it's, like, up to, like, 20 people can battle in this raid with you. Really? And, yeah, you take down so this boss. So you got 20 people around you physically, and you're all fighting together? Yeah, you're all tapping your phone, like, oh, I want to catch this damn thing. Because once you beat it, you can catch it. So, like, Mewtwo. You all have it? Mewtwo, well, you have to catch it. Like, No, but I'm saying there's 20 people in the raid. Say, for instance, the 20 people beat whichever boss you're all fighting right. together. Mm -hmm. All 20 of them will have the opportunity to capture it. Yep. Yep. You get these, uh, depending on how much your team does. So let's say, like, for, like I'm Team Valor, Briar's Instinct, and uh, Beastly is uh, Mystic. If you have other friends or other people that are on the same, like, color team as you, it'll, like, break down what team did the most damage. And whatever team does the most damage, they get, like, extra balls to potentially catch the boss oh, and stuff like cool. that. Yeah, so there's, like, So there's a reason levels. to actually care about your team. Yeah, exactly. And, like, a lot of teams, like, yesterday was Community Day. And, like, dude, they've been doing events. Like, dude, they have, like, all these little Pikachus spawning in with sunglasses and hats and, like, all sunburnt and shit. It's adorable. Like, they're spawning in everywhere right now. And yesterday was community day. And Squirtles were just popping up everywhere, man. And then they had uh, a research task. When you spun a Pokestop, you had to catch five. And when you caught five, it spawned one in with sungla sunglasses, like the OG Squirtle Squad from the cartoon. And it's pretty dope. They're adorable. So what what about this game right now has got you addicted? You, did you play it when it first came out? I did. I okay. played it so, quite a so bit when it first came out. And what about it what now is so, so addictive that it didn't necessarily get you when it first came out? Uh, I have more. I have friends playing it now, so I'm a little bit more connected on the internet. I got friends playing it. Um, a lot of people that are going to Guardian Con are talking about like grouping up for raids and things. Oh, that's fun! And it's gonna be great, dude. You're gonna see me nerd the fuck out like <laughs> in front of everyone. Be like, I caught it! Like, and uh, but it's Sam's playing it with me now, so that's cool. Like, oh, that's we got cool. something to do together. We're exercising, dude. I am exercising and outside at work. I get home. I'm walking, I'm going somewhere, I'm driving somewhere, I'm walking for, you know, dude, went for a walk at like, uh, over the weekend, or no, it was uh, last week, I think it was the night before 4th of July, at from like 11 to like 12.30 at night, like, it's, <clears throat> it's crazy, man, because I was supposed well, to catch 10, let me, let me just say this. I understand 10 that, ghost man. Pokemon, so they had me out at night, 
<laughs> I, see, I see the passion. I love it, Wilson. I, I really do. Just be be safe. You know, when Pokemon first became big, there was lots of stories of people being hurt and, and, and robbed and shot. And two guys who were hiking trying to look for Pokemon, and one of them got pushed off of a cliff and got robbed. Oh, you yeah. stole my Pikachu. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> no, somebody said, give me your phone and give me your shit and push them off the side of a cliff. Dude, I've so, totally heard stories of people uh, dropping lures in, in like the ghetto because you can visit a Poke Stop and, put and then an people item will in come. Yeah, they will come and just straight for, robbing motherfuckers. And they're that taking show your up. cars. It's, and you're it's out there at 11 30, man. Be careful, bro. Like, dude, dude, I am not in the hood hunting Pokemon, all right? Like, I'm not. I, I mean, I can only imagine like boys in the hood, too. It should Wilson pull up through the hood. In the projects, every kid got a pickle in their mouth looking at the white boy driving in. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, but it's got me all over the place, man. And like yesterday was community day, and I've never seen anything like this in my town. There was like at least one to two thousand people in the downtown area of my town. Everyone nice. was catching Pokemon. They, they added like these shiny variants that like they don't really do anything. They just look different. It's more of like a rare variation of it. And it was just really cool to hear like people freaking out, like I got a shiny Squirtle with sunglasses. You know what I mean? And like, <clears throat> I got two. You know, no big deal. But like, no, uh, no big deal. It, uh, <laughs> no big deal. So then, like, I'm walking around, I'm hitting all these Pokestops, and I'm fulfilling all the tasks that I get, and just catching so many Squirtles yesterday. And I noticed that a few raids were dropping. I was like, dude, there's so many people down here. There's got to be people at these raids. So I went up the street, went up to the courthouse. That's where it was. Knew where that I knew where that spot was. Yeah, and, that uh, one. <laughs> and, uh, where that one is. <laughs> there's like I'm walking up, you know, and I've got the my backpack and I got like the charger cord going into the break of my backpack and I could already see a big group of people waving me on. Come on, hurry up. Like you want to get in on the raid? And like we ended up getting so there's like two really big raid bosses right now. It's Mewtwo and Regice, Regice, Regis. I don't know, tomato tomato. But anyway. Uh, we beat him and I'm sitting there and I, I have eight balls to work with at this point because, you know, you have to use the special ones that you get after you Jeez, use I can hardly, hardly handle two. And I'm, yeah, you know, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I'm all over the place. And, uh, first two, I miss completely. Don't even hit the guy. And I'm like, okay, you know, and I'm sitting there and kind of start shaking. I was like, I really want this guy. Like I'm tired of seeing raids pop up and not having enough people to do it. Long story short, I got down to my last ball and ended up catching this guy. And the guy next to me caught it. And it was just like really cool moment. Like everyone was high fiving, like everyone was catching him. There was this guy that had three devices and he's like, I caught all three. And we're like, You're insane. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what the hell's wrong with you? We're not even in Japan. I've only seen that shit in like Japan. And uh but like, dude, it's it's really crazy right now. Like, it's really making a re, uh, like a reinsurgence. Like, people are having a good time. There's events like every other week. I heard They're it's like gaining popularity again, like have big any time. Of you guys in the comment section uh, tried out Pokemon Go recently, and if you have, let me know in the comments, and I'll share it live on the show. I haven't had an opportunity to play it, and like before, I probably won't because of my schedule and what's going on with me in my daily life. I'm, I'm, I leave here at 5. I get home at 4.30 or 5 every day, and then usually I got things to do. But if I do get an opportunity, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Uh, it sounds like, To me, the, one of the driving f factors of what, what makes it fun for you, uh -huh. I don't have because I don't have friends or anybody here in the state. I'm, I'm like an introverted person. My whole personality is only shared on the Internet. Everybody around here thinks I'm the meanest motherfucker on the block. I walk outside. I'm cutting grass. I'm looking like, why are you staring at me? And they're like, I live here. I, I don't fuck around. You, you don't even so, believe the stares I get what I'm doing playing Pokemon Go, hanging out in a cemetery trying to catch ghost Pokemon <laughs> late as hell at night. Holding your phone, just looking at people. It's like yeah like it's it's funny there has been a few people like i was walking down the street and, like this one guy was getting arrested for god knows what and this lady's like excuse me is jeremy going to jail and i was like i have no idea catching pokemon like i have no <laughs> idea who you are who jeremy is like <laughs> fuck jeremy yeah fuck jeremy he didn't pay, he didn't pay his it. dues but um <laughs> yeah man it's it's super cool like i'm absolutely loving it um i here's my thing though <clears throat> i would not recommend it picking Ooh, it up what yeah i would not recommend picking it up if you played it before and you saw the potential pick it back up 
But if you're one of those people that like really gets into something, like right now, there's like a Destiny lull. I'm waiting for the 17th. I'm waiting. I can't believe the, it when, when, when you said it to me on Twitter. I can't believe I'll, it. I'm waiting for the competitive, the 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 ranked changes, so I can get my claymore and go in mm. there, get all my donning armor, all that stuff. But uh, this has been a really good release. Like it's got me walking around. It's got me exercising. I got some friends. We're all meeting at Guardian Con. We're saving Pokemon up because they added trading as, as well. You could trade now with your friends. Oh, no kidding. And stuff like That's that. cool. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. It's it's Did absolutely just... awesome, dude. I walked up on this PokeStop yesterday during Community Day, and I shit you not, dude. There was like five, six, eighty year old, eighty year olds just tr- catching Squirtles. Hi, and you loving it, dude. I, I mean, like there. it was cool. Like I hate to be like, oh, old people playing video games is cute, but like old people playing video games is cute. Like that was awesome. Like they had their, their canes, they had like their umbrellas for shade and they were just, just throwing curveballs. Like it was fucking nobody else's business. Like they were young again. They were hanging out with all the young kids and like, I don't know. It was crazy, dude. Like I was looking at my map and like, it's just, it shows you where all the pokey stops and like the gyms are. And I took like a picture of all, well, it's right on the riverfront. So it was all three directions and just, I bet there was 150, 200 Pokestops that all had lures in them. Every oh, single, really? Just the whole city was just flooded right. with lures. It was amazing. Yeah. Is this something you think you'd ever be into or give a try? I, I did do it when it was new. I did it, I think, for a month or two, and I enjoyed it. You know, it was, it was fun. It did get me out of the house to, like, walk around a little bit. It was something I could enjoy with the boys, too. It was, like, because everybody in the family was kind of doing it together and like kind of having fun and talking about it and like when i was out doing like photo shoots and stuff and i had a little bit of downtime i'd like w- walk around a little bit and look for a pokemon i i liked it i'm i might download it again Why do not? you guys think that as like a family event maybe i should download it on everybody's phones and we just as a family do like a maybe one or two mile walk and see what dude happens. they'll what love it hurt? yeah what can it hurt they'll love it i shit you not like me and sam will be sitting in here and she'll like pop in with her phone and be like yo there's a raid up mm-hmm. the street <laughs> like, like, do you want to go do Sam it? Sam is like, awesome. She's like, I got a raid pass. Like, they give you one free raid pass a day for spinning a gym and stuff like that. Like, all this stuff that you can buy, if you just grind it out, like, you don't really have to spend, like, really any money. Like, uh, like item storage upgrade and maybe Pokemon storage upgrade, like, will be the things that you have to buy eventually. But, like, they had this big worldwide event and... America had to do a million research tasks. Asia had to do a million. And then Europe and India had to do a million. And then the people within the event in Germany had to do 100,000 research tasks. And Asia finished theirs in like six hours. Yeah, and, uh, because there's like seven billion of them over there. Yeah, and they go hard <laughs> in that game too. Like, and uh, So basically the world got them done. And they unlocked this um, Pokemon Articuno as a raid boss. So on Saturday, the day before Community Day, me and Sam went out to the local mall and just randomly saw some other Pokemon Go people and were like, "Yo, let's raid, let's catch this thing!" And like, ended up knocking four of them out. Like, me and Sam caught seven Articunos between the two of us, and uh, it was just really cool. It's like they're adding all these events that you got to work towards, and it feels like you're doing something, and it's like a sense of community. It's it's very cool, man. I would say check it out and then plus with the announcement of let's go pikachu and let's go eevee for the switch i can actually take the pokemon that i catch and go and put them in the game oh no kidding yeah so they're talking about that you can't take them from the console game and put them in your phone but uh, they were saying you can take them from your phone and play them in game which is going to be dope can't I don't know. I might download it, especially now that I'm going to Guardian Con this week. Like, this is a perfect around. opportunity, right? I'll be doing a lot of walking around, right? I'll be doing a lot of standing now. still. Oh, you just sold me right oh, there. You- <laughs> I'll be doing a lot of standing still at the booth, but I'll also be doing a lot of walking around. I'm looking forward to it. Mm. I was, I did download um, Hollow Knight. I, that's a game I played on PC, I think, a year ago. I think we might have talked about it on the show. I'm not sure uh, when that exactly it came out on PC. I didn't finish it on PC, though. Uh, but I did download it on the Switch, and I gotta say, it is an awesome Switch game because, like, being able to just play that kind of wherever, it's gonna be a perfect plane game. You know, you need something yeah. to do on the plane, mm-hmm. or I do anyway, because I get fucking crazy on those planes. Just sitting there with nothing to Bro. do drives me nuts. Bro, 
<laughs> I feel sorry for the person who's got to sit next to me because I'm going you, to be sweating bullets. Well, this is going to be like holding on to somebody's listen, hand that he doesn't listen, know. Like, everything's fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Just... If you ever, if you get, an, you know, flight anxiety, watch Passenger 57 while you're on the plane. I woke up. I, I woke up the other night to a YouTube video talking about plane crashes. And I was like, the fuck? And like woke up and turned my shit off and went to bed. And I was like, no, no, no. Like, that was bad timing. Yeah. I was like, what is this, dude? Why Who's you making do this YouTube to me, YouTube? videos about plane crashes? That's fucked. I should, I should just shut YouTube off after 11 p.m. Like, you're out of here. Right. You have like a timer on, like a sleep timer on a TV. I swear, some of the most <laughs> fucked up shit comes in my suggested after 11 p.m. <laughs> I used to, or I still do listen to podcasts while I'm going to sleep. Like, I put one headphone in, and I, you know, I just kind of fall asleep listening to podcasts. But what I used to do is just let, like, when one podcast ended, it would just play the next one in the playlist. But what I, what would happen eventually is that, or sometimes would, like, somebody just start screaming on, like, a podcast that I, I wasn't Fucking necessarily, wake, like, wake me up. <laughs> like, so I, I eventually just, like, said, okay, only play one podcast at a time. <laughs> and when that's over, you know, just stop playing and hopefully I'm asleep by the time that first one's over. But, like, I'll listen to, like, something like Joe Rogan or, mm. or, Rogan or is so good. yeah, it really is a good podcast. Uh, I'll, I'll, you know, there's a lot of podcasts that I subscribe to and I don't listen to every one every week, but it's, it's nice to have something to listen to that YouTube videos, like I'm always opening my eyes when I'm going to sleep, right? It's like somebody else start talking about something in a YouTube video. I'll be like, what's he talking about? Yeah. <laughs> like, right, right, I'll be like, look in at this him. new exotic. And I'll be like, hold the fuck on. <laughs> 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 new exotic. You turn all around. <laughs> yeah, man. All right, but uh, like, Basically, that's what I've been up to is work and Pokemon Go. Like, I yeah. can't help it. Kind of both happen at the same time, too. I wonder if they're related. Now that you're kind of like doing the uh, concrete stuff, I wonder if uh, is that helping you catch yeah, more yeah. stuff? Yeah, because I'm traveling all over the place and we're usually yeah. in towns. And then, like, at lunchtime, I'll be like, yo, hold on, dog. I got to go catch this Pokemon. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> that's what we should do for a picture opportunity, Briar, is like the Destiny, like, hold on emote. Yeah. <laughs> We should do that at Guardian Con. Take a picture. Yeah, just want to catch this Pokemon. <laughs> All right. So the next topic is one I'm, I'm actually interested to hear about because we're in the process of doing this ourselves. Oh, are you? Yeah. Okay. Car shopping. Yeah. Ooh. Car shopping, man. It used to be like a ton of fun. Like when it was time for a new car, like I used to get really hyped about it because I was. I'm not a car guy, but I liked to drive. Like I, I still do enjoy the act of driving. I enjoy, you know, riding motorcycles as well. It's like there's something about, you know, uh, kind of just, you know, sportily handling a, a car or a motorcycle or, you know, whatever that just really appeals to me. It's it's a fun thing. Like these big mechanical things that everybody's allowed to just like <laughs> drive the fuck around. Like if you think about it, it's scary as hell. So. My last car was a Jeep Wrangler, which I was absolutely head over heels in love with. That was a lease. Um, I got married while I owned that car, right? And I got married to somebody who already had kids. So I kind of married into two kids. So when I when the lease came up on the Wrangler, I was like, it's kind of hard to justify having a two-door Wrangler, right? And a, and a family. So I was like... Time for us again. I could go and get like a four to a Wrangler, but by the time I swear to God, like the price of a Wrangler went up like six grand for the same exact thing between like the first one and when I was ready to get, get another one. Like it was in, insane Yikes. how much, how, how expensive they are. So I got, I, I started shopping around a little bit. I'm like thinking to myself, you know, maybe it's time to get a four door. It'd be a lot easier. We could take trips with the kids a lot easier. My wife has a very small car, a Subaru. I think it's called a, uh, Cross track. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that. It's basically an Impreza with like like a lift kit on it. It's a really weird car. But it's <laughs> tiny. It's a little tiny car. I'm okay. a big, huge dude. I don't fit in it at all. I don't like being in it at all. <laughs> so I, I ended up test driving a bunch of sedans. I went, you know, I went to Chrysler. I went to Ford. I went to Chevy. I went to uh, Hyundai, Honda, uh, Acura, all of them, right? And I ended up saying, okay, you know what? I don't like any of these fucking cars. 
<laughs> but I'm going to get one anyway. So I bought an absolute base model uh, Accord sedan, right? Four-door Accord sedan. And it's been a nice car. It's been a nice Honda's car. You can't, can't go wrong with them, and they last forever. Yeah. Well, I, I'm leasing anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I don't give a shit how long they last. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing lasts forever in my hands, man. I <laughs> trust me. I second that. I, I once rented a car and figured out it didn't have anti lock brakes. So for the rest of the night, I just spent the night getting up to sixty miles per hour and then slamming on the brakes and going. Aah! Oh my god! <laughs> it was Disaster. like the first car I'd ever driven that didn't have anti lock brakes. That's amazing. Was <laughs> that's like that's right up there with my buddy who. Stole his mom's Jeep back in the day. I was sorry, <clears throat> no, borrowed his mother's mm. Jeep back in the day. <laughs> and we drove it for like 30 minutes and we pulled it to a stop sign. I was like, yo, your tires are smoking, bro. I was like, the the e-brakes on. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yup. It's like, that didn't feel weird to you, bro? <laughs> like you were trying to drive against you. gravity, dude? Right? I think That's usually, I think usually when you steal your parents' car, you're so young that you don't really know the difference. But anyway, <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're Allegedly. Right. Allegedly stole. So now it's time. My lease is up, right? My lease is up. I have the option. I could um, buy the car I'm currently driving, um, or I could go and lease. There's a like a newer Honda Accord. That's it's a lot nicer than the one I got. Or I could uh, I could go back to the Jeep. I could go back to that Wrangler lifestyle. Mm. Right, what, the what topless, doorless lifestyle, huh? 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 You already got a motorcycle. What the hell? Are you? You, you already got that lifestyle. <laughs> I don't fucking ride that thing. I haven't ridden it in years. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> how much you like to ride? I loved it, man. I loved it. But when I got married, it's like all of a sudden, it's like it's so much harder to like justify the danger of being on a motorcycle. Yeah, I might not. Be like when home. when people are relying on you, it was fun. Yeah, it sure was. Oh, when God. when it was just me, I mean. I'm sure my parents will miss me. <laughs> we'll all miss you. Yeah. Don't say no stupid shit but, like that. But as soon as you're like yeah. a part of a family, like you're a provider, it's it's a very different feeling, you know. Well, it's a, my, my right. brother, my, my brother-in-law Todd, uh, he's married to Kate's sister. Um, he lost his brother uh, to a motorcycle accident a few years ago, like yeah, six years ago in Ohio. His brother Curtis and uh, he was part of a biker uh, group, and they all rode together and whatnot. He used to be a police officer. And he ended up, you know, going through a very brutal death. And then oh. Todd, uh, his brother, who was, you know, Kate, my brother-in-law, he went and bought a motorcycle, like, immediately after. And then he bought, like, the trike. And he was on there with Kate's sister. And, you know, he wanted to kind of connect with his lost brother. But I was like, that's the, the worst way. It's like a Christian going to get nailed to the cross. The thing that's you, sketchy. You know, you, you want to be safe. And so he finally ended up. I think last year, selling them because they've got four kids. You know, he's got a son in high school, daughters, two daughters in middle school, and they got a baby who's no, well, not baby. Uh, their son is Nova's age, and he finally got rid of them. He asked me, man, you need to go get you a motorcycle so we can ride together. And I was like, hell no. D do I got to remind you what just happened to your brother? You know? Yeah. You know what I think I might do is I might end up getting like a dirt bike or something. Something that, because. It eliminates the prospect of getting destroyed Run over by a car. Way. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's it's a it's a totally different thing, right? You ride it slower, and you have more like kind of armor on, and I think there's less risk of serious injury. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can still can. fuck yourself up, but before like, you do not, that, you should get hit a, by cars at get, seventy miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. Before you do that, though, you should get a sidecar installed. I'll go half on it with you, and then we uh -huh. can ride around together like Indiana Jones and his dad. I like it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're, we're, we're in the prospect of getting a new family, right? Kate drives the yeah. uh, the van right now. She drives a, a Chrysler Town and Country. Those and, are nice. Uh, yeah, it's, it's. I love it. I'll never but, drive a minivan. But, but I recently, won't do it. I don't I care how say, practical uh, it is. No, I refuse. You refuse to, what? <laughs> to to drive a minivan. I was gonna suggest. I will a not do it. The town country is not a movie. That's a big. That's a big. Thing. I like. They're like boats. I like people that own uh, really nice minivans because, like, you take a trip in one of those. There's movies playing and like there's Locking plenty seats. of room. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really nice, but I'll never own one. It's like a boat. I'll never own a boat, but I, I'm happy to have a friend who does. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. So 
the, the van, yeah. I've never leased a, a vehicle before. I think the only time I've ever bought a brand new car was the very first car I ever, ever uh, rented. I, I leased that. And that was back in 99. Your so first bought, car you ever bought was a brand new car? First one, yeah. No kidding. I don't think I brought a, bought a brand new car until I was 30. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, I went up there with my dad. He co-signed, and hey, it was a done deal. Thanks, Dad. Uh, but ever since then, uh, I've always bought used. You know, I'd buy them mm -hmm. and fix them up and just, you know, handle my business, make sure they run well. And, and the same thing with the van here. But about a month ago, uh, our daughter was sick, real sick baby and we ended up taking her to the pediatrician because she had stopped eating she was losing weight like she i could see her abs and everything and she's only one so i was like how you got abs i'm trying to get them bitches so it was time to take her to the pediatrician we took her down to stockbridge and the, the doctor said she's dehydrated look at her eyes are sunken in you need to take her to the emergency room so the emergency room's like in the the center of atlanta we're about 30 minutes away about 25 miles and so we're on the expressway, 675, and some stretches of road are without light. And this particular area of expressway didn't have much light. I may have told you guys it's happened. Uh, might be just as big a surprise to you as it was to me when it happened. But I'm doing about 75 in uh, the, the Chrysler town and country. And up in the distance, maybe 20 feet ahead of me, it's white. I'm like, what is that? It's white? Why the fuck is there a pit bull in the middle of the expressway? Oh. Did you hit it? <laughs> dead in the doornail. Uh, the reason I know Yikes. he's dead is because... I don't understand what is going on here. How did we get to this place where we're talking about dead dogs? I don't know. I'm just telling you what happened. <laughs> Shit. Anyway. I was looking for car, advice on what car to buy, and all of a sudden we're talking about killing dogs. Yeah, I'm telling you why we're looking for another Did you put it car. on the grill? No. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, there it is. That's why we're talking about the fucking pit bull, okay? I don't eat everything that I kill. Shit. Anyway, we hit this dog going about 75 miles an hour, and it was a big pit. It knocked off the passenger side of the bumper. That went flying through the air. Kate screamed, thought it was a leg. Anyway, I pull over to the side of the car. The shit's leaking. I'm like, oh, well, I see people in the middle of the road. It's nighttime. They're all swerving. I heard a couple of cars hit it. Boom, 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 boom. I'm like, oh, God, this dog is still fucking people up. Anyway, the, the dog destroyed part of the radiator. It destroyed uh, part of my air my air condition, uh, my air air condition conditioner compressor. It had to be replaced. So was a total of 700 bucks installed. And so I was like, oh, God, let's just go and look. Well, she wanted to go look. She has to drive it. So we went up to the Honda dealership, and uh, she's going to decide probably within the next couple of weeks which one she wants. She got everything priced, and of course, you know we're working together and, and taking. Care what are of you business. looking at? What cars? Uh, the Honda Passport and the Honda Odyssey. Are those both minivans? The Odyssey's not mini. No, it's it's big and it's nice. It, it's a max three, van. Three it's rows. It's a maxi van. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> three rows. It, it seats. Uh, it seats because well, it's three rows. It seats. Uh, well, it could seat up to eleven people. Look, you all guys right. need all this like, <clears throat> like all this cargo room for your awesome family. Just get a bus. Just take. Well, well, we'll this is the, the, this bus. the thing I'm telling. I'm telling kids. I want something to fun to drive, though. You know, like, the bus is pretty damn fun to drive. Nah, like, you get, kids you get are about to, to be yell bad. at everyone behind you because you're the bus driver. You get to you get to have your Chris Farley, Billy Madison moment where you get to yell at everyone behind you. And, no, look, Wilson. If you do it right, all you gotta do is grab the mirror and look. Because when you grab the mirror, everybody in the back seat is doing something wrong. Is going to look up, and then all you do is zero in, in their eyes as you drive. They're like, "He's driving and looking at me. This is scary." It is. I know, dude. I used to hate it when my bus driver would do that, dude. Oh my god, it would terrify me. She wouldn't even drive. She'd just look back, and there'd be a mirror in the back that would let her see the road. And it's like, why are you so concerned about what these kids are doing before school on the bus? Like, it's it was terrifying. But you should get a bus. That's my <laughs> okay. vote. Like, like a over. big yellow school bus. Um, or like, I don't know, like, like maybe like a blue church bus. Like, I don't know around here. All the church buses are blue. I don't know if that's a thing nationwide. Also prison buses. I wonder if those two things are connected. Maybe that's the bus I was on. You guys are the conspiracy theorists. Maybe that's the bus <laughs> I was on and not the church bus. <laughs> I want to hear about this, this new little bit of news from you, Briar. Yeah. Uh, the next topic is what you, you were talking to us about two weeks ago. Uh -huh. And I'm excited to hear your thoughts on it and how it's going and how you plan on fully implementing it. Oh, okay. So, uh, people, who, go ahead. 
people who have uh, f- who follow me on YouTube probably already have seen this and like have kind of seen the effect of this. But uh, one of the things I've been thinking about doing for a long time, uh, and uh, you know, I, I've been on the fence about it because. Well, one of the things I've been thinking about doing for a long time is transitioning the YouTube channel to include more technology stuff, right? It's like, because it's it, like, I, I find it pretty fun. It, I'm pretty passionate about it. And it's something that a long time ago was a pretty big part of my YouTube channel. Back in the Call of Duty days, I'd say a quarter of the videos I made were all about, you know, new controllers, new gaming headsets, new new this, new that, you know, like basically gaming tech, gaming hardware, like that kind of stuff. And as I've gotten more into PC gaming, um, like I kind of want to start talking about that because I like to talk about stuff I'm passionate about. Like the, that's one of the things I like to do. So, you know, it, it's fun. It, I wrote this topic, uh, you know, last week for last week's show, and then unfortunately we couldn't get it done. But now having like another week under my belt, it's it's been interesting kind of watching it because what what I've noticed is that it's some of the people who. Like I, I'm used to always seeing in the comments are in the comments of the new tech stuff too, and they they find it somewhat interesting. But I'm seeing a lot of new faces too, so it's been a weird thing. So I don't know if I right now I'm I'm kind of struggling. Do I want to actually break this off to a separate YouTube channel? Because I still want to do Destiny stuff on the main YouTube and gaming stuff. Because when Anthem comes out, when you know some of the new games I'm really looking forward to come out, I'm gonna want to be talking about those on my channel, right? Making YouTube videos. So I'm starting to think, you know, maybe it's time to just have two YouTube channels, one that does more gaming related stuff and one that really is focused more on tech stuff. Um, So I've been really thinking a lot about that. Um, And I was actually kind of looking for your advice, both of you guys, and also kind of both the Twitch chats advice and the YouTube. Like, what do you guys think? You know, like in the YouTube comments, you guys who watch this channel, like, would you like to see both of these things combined into one channel or would you rather see them broken apart and have two separate channels, one devoted more toward hardware and more one devoted more toward software? So maybe have them in different playlists or something like that. So you can organize them. That was suggested by uh, Omega Raw. They are in separate playlists. Yeah, that would be huge. I would say keep them on the same channel for now. And if you start to see, like, it's going to be tough because if you see a surge of growth during a Destiny drought and you're only doing um, tech review stuff, which, like, I know you love doing and I enjoy watching them too because you know what the hell you're doing and you know, like, really how to review something to where I can make a decision if I want to buy it or not. But um, if, you know, during a Destiny drought, you're getting some good growth on your tech stuff, then maybe consider starting a new channel because then you know you're going to see another surge of growth come Forsaken. And it sounds like there's going to be a ton of shit to talk about when Forsaken drops. But the people like, who like have been around for a while, I feel I feel like they already know that I kind of yeah. like both of these things. So mm-hmm. they kind of just go along with it. But my fear is like getting new people to come to the channel. They're going to like, oh, well, I like this youtube video about destiny and so i subscribed to him but now he's made three videos about motherboards and pr- like delitting intel processors now like right. what is what is this channel that i subscribe to like that's a little bit of what i'm worried about right it's like i love doing youtube and it's a it's it's a hobby but it's also a job for me you know there is a right. you know there is financial consequences to these decisions my, my thoughts are this and, and you know as someone who's done youtube it's hard to serve two masters, and, and and I think you're absolutely right. If people become accustomed to a particular style of video or something that's make, making them gravitate towards you, and then they, they're offered something else, it can be put off. It, it, it can make a person, you know, drift away slowly. If, if a, a channel is all about reviews of products, uh, I think that people who like those type of videos will, will stay around. But if you mix mix that audience and you fragment it, Destiny people might you know be they might not really be into a lot of the PC stuff or the hardware stuff. They might be here just exclusively for what you're talking about with Destiny. You're you're very steeped in the lore. You know about this world. You know the biggest players and the biggest names in the Destiny world. 
And so those people might say, I love Briar, but I don't want to hear about these headphones. I don't want to hear about this new mouse. Right. But vice versa. And vice versa, you know, like yeah, if somebody people comes really like for... that. I love that's you know, one of the first things that I saw you do was head you know, the headsets. You know, you used to talk about the headsets and scuff controllers and to me, I like nerdy shit. I like technology. So to me it all falls into my category, but a lot of people are very anal about what they are digesting on the internet. Some people are, are you know, very particular about what they they, what they, they definitely want to spend are time Beasley. Watching. They and definitely so, are. With that said though, there's been a lot of people who have kind of transitioned their Destiny YouTube channel into other things. Like, Bifus started doing Warframe lore, Monster Hunter lore. And at first I was like, oh, bummer. There's just, like, nothing to talk about in Destiny. But the moment that I see that him or Sir Wallen or anyone, yourself, talking about news, I'm watching those videos. I'm right there. I'm right back into what I want. Like, don't get me wrong, it is, like, kind of exciting to be like, oh, Briar Rabbit uploaded the new video, hope it's, you know, talking about Forsaken, and then it's not. Yeah, sure, that's a little disappointing, but, like, that fades when you find that some other YouTuber uploaded the video that you want to watch. You know what I mean? Like, it's people's attention span, very short on the internet. One, one, thing, one thing I'll interject about what you said, though. Uh, when, you're, when you're talking lores... Those are things that people can really get invested in. You know, if you want to talk about Monster Hunter, or you want to talk about another. I haven't game, watched a single one on Monster Hunter or Warframe. Yeah, from but, My but, Name Is Bye. But, but but the but when the he puts out a Destiny it, one, I'm watching it. It's much That's harder to point. get into the lore of hardware, is what I'm saying. <clears throat> no, it's so, not necessarily like the lore. I'm just saying like Bife Bife's YouTube channel is lore. You know what I mean? And it used to just be Destiny lore. So anytime that I saw on my phone, my name is Bife has uploaded the new video. You thought it was Destiny or something else. No, I knew it would be Destiny lore. But like up until recently with this lull and there not being as much lore in D2 for now, um, he's straight off to doing Warframe and Monster Hunter, which aren't my games. That's very overwhelming to jump into a world and learn about its lore when you haven't spent much time in the game itself. But the moment that I see my name is Bife has uploaded a video, Anna Bray animated, you know, comic book series, like I'm like, oh shit, you know, I'm strapping in, I'm tuning in, I'm watching. I've stayed sub to him. Here's you know the thing you got to think like, about though, right? You you are, um, I think you are a very loyal person. You just you seem that way to me after knowing you for as long as I have. Loyal. You know, sure. Yeah, I think Brian feels <laughs> the same way, right? A lot of people are. And so as a content provider, you're getting paid per view and you want people to watch all your videos. Mm. Everybody's not going to be loyal like you. Some people are going to say, man, you guys have seen the, the comments. YouTube is toxic as fuck. People, man, fuck this guy. He's not talk you know, he ain't talking about the shit I want to hear no more. Man, fuck this shit. I'm out. Unsubscribed. You know, you'll see. That's all where that shit. comment came from. That was word for word. That, that last was comment. Like- <laughs> yeah. <it's- laughs> Gave my shit away. Yeah. <laughs> But you want to keep people engaged, and so and the the only way I feel to maximize the potential of getting those views is to give what this particular audience is used to seeing, and if you want to create a whole new audience, give them something, start off fresh with something, and say that's this is what this is about. Might not be nearly as many videos as this channel, but if you want to hear about technology, if you want to hear about new products that are coming out, you know that's what we're going to be doing here, and watch that thing grow, and and don't fragment your audience. You can't serve two masters unless you are the two masters you know what i mean yeah. so that, that's my opinion and, and it's of course totally up to you but yeah. I, I would think briar as good as your content is all your stuff is top notch you know you can easily go straight to briar's tech and, and fucking kill that the same way you do your, your briar's briar rabbit youtube channel take it to youtube as well see what they think you know yeah, just for sure. like guys i'm looking for basic stuff in the comment section one for yes two for one for new channel two for keep it the same or whatever like you know what i mean see how they feel maybe be like hey if you have some constructive criticism i'd be happy to hear it you know what i mean but like other than that always keep in mind though keep in mind the new the new audience he's going to be bringing in with that the the tech videos you know people who see destiny there's millions of them who see destiny videos every day and don't click but those same people, many of them will see a new video on a new controller or a new peripheral or uh, a new mouse and keyboard or a new motherboard. And they're clicking on those videos because that's what they like. And so if he starts to pull those people in and they, they start to see, you know, Destiny and this or Lore and this, those people are like, this is not what I came for. So maybe, I mean, I don't know. 
to me, the, the decision is pretty clear. It go two ways, but uh, it's totally up to you, man. All right, thank you, guys. You guys give me a lot of we good We love feedback. you, Briar. We love yeah, you, love, too. Yeah, I love you, too. Another mother, baby. Today is I your you day, and it'll be the best day. I'm sure whatever you decide to do, it'll work out for the best. Like I said, maybe put something out on Twitter. Maybe put something out on YouTube. Just kind of give them a feeler. Let your, your audience there know. And, yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I see nothing but good things from it, man. It's probably I, nothing but good. Man. I want to see you do it because I know you really enjoy it, and you get really excited when we talk, and you're like, Look at all those bags of new shit. <laughs> That's true. Before the show, I do that Surprise. a lot. Don't I? <laughs> I just, I just went to fucking PC World. Look at all this shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh right. my goodness. So the, the next little bit of news, or not news? I can't say news. News. <laughs> the next little uh, bit of content is something for the beastly gamer. You guys don't like to pull out the crazy shit, and this is going to be interesting because. You're going to find out if you have friends at all. And so that's the process. Uh -oh. uh, last Gamer. This is the last gamer on Earth. So there's been an infection that's ravaged the world. And it's made all the gamers of the world feel no connection and no desire to ever game again. You alone. But it can spread through controllers? <laughs> it, it's spreading through the air. It's just like what happened in The Happening. That Mark Wahlberg was like, what? What? Yes. Yeah. That chat is more toxic than I thought. Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting me some pure L before Guardian Con. <laughs> you and only one friend are the last people on Earth that play video games. You get to choose who this destined player is. Who is the last gamer? And they're, they're stuck with you for life. you got a lot of people to choose from. Who is the last person on Earth to play games with you? And you guys are going to basically be roommates because nobody else is going to want to fuck with you anymore. We're reading now, okay? Get that encyclopedia. <laughs> Fuck this shit. So the easy answer for me to obviously say is Sam. Okay. Yeah. And like a lot of people are like, oh, that's the easy answer. That's yeah, boring. I'll do the same thing. I'll do so the like, same thing. Yeah. If if I was the last gamer and I had to choose who the last gamer would be, there's a good chance that she wouldn't be gaming. So she'd have left my ass in the man cave long ago. So I I, I think I gotta give this one up to my boy con man because before we had we lived out in the sticks all right so we didn't get y'all's high speed internet doohickeys until about halo 2 halo 3 halo 3 ish around xbox 360 around that time we started getting cable in our area and um before we had a lot of games that we could play together i just remember like jumping into oblivion and being like hey what quest line are you doing tonight what are you gonna you know what areas you're going to and we'd roughly go to the same area do the same quest go to work the next day and talk about it and how we played out our scenarios then we found out <clears throat> that if i downloaded dlc he could sign into my account on his xbox download the dlc and then it would be on his profile for oblivion and it spawned this just whole new plethora of just going half half and half on <laughs> dlcs and video games and stuff like that and uh me and him have always had i would say like 99.9 percent .9 like seen eye to eye on just about every game wow. that 0.1 percent being destiny 2 you bastard i'll never forgive never forgive you for leaving oh man <laughs> <laughs> that breaks my heart what the hell is wrong with him he'll be back for forsaken because i say so Oh, <laughs> claim it, name it. <laughs> well, How are you beastly? What would you... For, for me, of course, same as Wilson, uh, the easy answer and the definite truthful answer is Kate. Uh, and right. she is that thing for me. Uh, everything besides near automata, she's been 100% on with me. Uh, oh, and the last of us. God damn it, Briar. She does. I think you ruined it, Briar. She doesn't ever want to play the multiplayer again. What the hell did you do to my girl? Nobody want to get bitch bomb, bro. Man, yeah, bitch yeah. bombs are the best bombs. <laughs> anyway, uh, my answer would be, my answer would be a person I never play games with anymore, but I, I grew up playing with and spending all my time with and sharing a room with. That's my older brother Joe. And the reason I say that is Joe is really behind the times. He has the PS4 now. He has, you know, a few really good games. He pre-ordered Resident Evil 2 like as soon as he saw it. Has God of War, but. As far as new technology and new video game types, he doesn't really mess with. 
So to me, I would love to get him in VR and let him run around. I'd love to let him try some, you know, some experimental or some new type of games, uh, kind of indies, and just have a conversation. Play with him in multiplayer. He doesn't play multiplayer in anything. He doesn't play, have PlayStation Plus, so he like plays exclusively the single player kind of experience. I'd like to see him, you know, kind of bridge that gap and go into uh, the multiplayer. Cuphead or anything, so that he'd be my my answer because he's the one I know the most. He's a very laid back version of me with a much smaller penis, but uh, that's Joe. Not everybody can have the Atlanta Anaconda, you know what I'm saying? Be he lives in Stockbridge. He'd be the Stockbridge bitch. The <laughs> Stockbridge bitch. The Stockbridge garden <laughs> snake. <laughs> Think about it, Brian. You got so bad. man. I can only imagine being you right now. This is a hard one because. Nobody in my like I don't have an easy pick. Like my wife doesn't right. play video games. I actually what? like one of the what reasons can, I started you playing play? YouTube. One of the reasons I started playing YouTube, doing YouTube and and that kind of thing is because I didn't have anybody in my like meat space Media who played life. video yeah. games, right? So I, I you know, I saw these guys on YouTube and they had tons of people to play with anytime they wanted. I was like, I want that. I want you know, that's cool. <laughs> I want friends. I want friends. But, but Briar, Briar, the thing that I don't want you to, to this to be lost on you. This is your opportunity. Can you imagine the kind of games that your wife would play? Can you imagine if she enjoyed Destiny as much as you? I mean, it doesn't have to be a person who loves video games now. It could be a person who, with the flip of a switch, loves video games then. I feel like that's changing the answer or the change of the question. Like that's Mandela. That's Mandela effect, man. It's too much. I don't think it's changing thing. it. Can I try? Can I do President Trump just so I keep him busy? Keep him off yeah. the fucking internet all the time? Can't keep him off Twitter? Twitter. <laughs> yeah, you do, you, take one for the team. Yeah, keep that motherfucker off Twitter. <laughs> you play with Trump. I'll play with Un. And Beastie's got Putin. And Word. games bring everyone together. You know no what I mean? Eventually, we'll all do a raid together. <laughs> and world peace. I've got yeah. the world best peace. last word. I've got the best. I've got the best aim. <laughs> No, nobody the, golden guns like me. Okay, we, we need to stop. We need to stop. <laughs> it's it's approaching to too political, right? <laughs> Over the line. <laughs> in, no, in all seriousness, um, there's that one the person that I, I, who I haven't actually played with that much. That I, when I play with, there's a sense of copestheticness that is, it's very appealing to me. And that's Tefty Teft. Mm. I you were going we, to we've gone Gary I love playing with but he fucking has pissed me off more times than once with those fucking motorbikes and fucking <laughs> I wanted to kill him that day what happened what do you mean oh my god we're playing uh, PUBG <laughs> Gary's in chat right now. Gary's we're in playing, chat. We're playing <laughs> PUBG, and Gary's bored. So he gets on a motorcycle, and the rest of us, we're in a four-man party. We got three guys taking it real seriously, moving from tree to tree. You know, like, for that. you know, aiming, aiming above the hills, watching the skyline. Gary's on a fucking motorbike doing laps around us, <laughs> <laughs> laughing his ass off. Just attracted all the all attention the in the world. <laughs> So I it to started that with day. Me, and, me and Briar in a house, <laughs> and I'm like, yo, you hear that? There's a vehicle, and Briar's like, vehicle, <laughs> locking and loading and ready to go, and we look out, and it's Gary, and we're like, okay, it's just, what are you doing, Gary? And he's like, oh, I thought I'd go for a lovely cruise here, you know, moss <laughs> out, I think, I'd, I think I'd just go for a ride, and uh, so we're we're hanging out, we, get, we move to the next area, we hear the same thing. Car, Briar's lock and load. I mean, he is ready to shoot some people. And it's Gary again. And finally, I could, I could hear it in Briar's voice. It's like, why don't you help us out here, Gary, and get off that bike? Same scenario, like, next game after we die. He's just whipping donuts in the back lot behind the house. And people just come in and just murder the shit out of us. Briar goes and takes a bathroom break. And Gary goes... I think I should lay off the bike, man. You think it's really pissing me off? <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm pretty sure if he was pissed, we'd know about it. But I'm sure he's irritated by it because me and him well, are trying to... Briar gets pissed off if you fuck with Briar in the game. He, he, it'll should... take him a second, but he gets yeah. pissed. What if I should take it easy on the bike, man? He says. <laughs> 
Classic. Classic uh, I game. love. I actually got a chance to play some Destiny with Gary this week, and we were having a blast. We were talking about, you know, talking about how Gary's mind works is such a beautiful thing. One minute you're talking about, you know, the game, and the next minute you're talking about uh, who knows what. It's so fun hanging out with Gary. Like it, it just, it's so Gary. crazy. Gary, you gotta come play some games with us, man. I know, right? Please. Uh, I love you, Gary. Would be nice, Gary. So Tefty Teft. Is yeah, Tefty Teft Tef is he's he, we've we've raided we've raided together like a ton of time. Not a ton of times, a few times. But they're high pressure situations, like eight hours, you know, like eight hours in a raid. Um and there's something about the way our minds think. It's not the same, but it's copesthetic. Um like if if we're running down a hallway and there's a, a one of us has to break to the left, one of us has to break to the right. We don't say it. We just do it. <laughs> like and automatically known. Like if if there's got to be like two three man teams and me and Teft are on the same team, it's always it's just easy. Do you, you know what I mean? Like it's mm-hmm. it's an odd relationship and it's not one that I've ever formalized or or like wondered wh- how it works like that and we Can don't I play a, a ton. Yeah. Can I take a stab at it? You both have beautiful beards. That's true. That's true. And I, and I think after <laughs> being around each other for so long, they they start to talk to each Maybe other. The beards like are communicating. <laughs> yeah, those it's, beards be communicating. It's a psychic antenna, in other words. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys are just conveying thoughts via beardfi. Yeah, Wi-Fi beardfi. Which is totally organic, Static non-cancer causing. <laughs> it could be that everybody who plays with Tefty feels like I do. Mm. Right? It could be that's just how Tefty is, you know? I don't know. Tefty's usually calling me out when I raid with him for either not getting a drop, not getting a masterwork, or back in D1 I was always a uh, self res warlock, mm-hmm. and we were doing um, the Wrath of the Machine challenge mode, and he's like, so when I say pop your supers, everyone pop your supers. That means you, Wilson, with your oh, self, oh. your <laughs> selfish self res, and like, <laughs> so shit's going down. There's a million things going on, and all of a sudden, Tefty in in his uh, black spindle rage is like, I don't see any solar grenades, Wilson. What's up with that? And like, <laughs> on, it's like. It's like, I want that extra 1.8% damage. You got to overclock the damage that we're getting here. And uh, he's, he's a wonderful guy to raid with. Uh, yeah, he's a ton of fun, man. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good choice. Tefty Teft. The way very, of the beard. Very happy to hear that everybody's going to be happy with their one player. Uh, I'd still think Well, Trump unless was- I go with Trump, I wouldn't actually be happy, but I feel like I'd be doing the world a service. Yeah. yeah. Bit of a language barrier with Un. You know what I'm saying? Maybe. Who knows? Get Robin to sit next to you. All right. So the last topic is uh-huh. is, is, is another of, of the Beastly Gamers crazy topics. And it's going to be, uh, Briar, don't change my shit. I see you in there, you <laughs> motherfucker. Gary's going to come in and draw a dick. Watch. The measure <laughs> of a man. The measure of a man is, is a reoccurring type of topic. And uh, this week, it's who is... Who would be the last one standing of these 80s monsters? 80s so, monsters. Yes. Jason Voorhees. Okay. Michael Myers. Freddy Krueger. Pinhead from Hellraiser. Not from Puppet Master. Thank God. Chucky. Or the Predator. Oh, you I, got, I, got a, I got a couple of questions. Yes. Jason Voorhees got more powerful as those movies went along, right? Like he started off as kind of just like a dude with like a sack over his head. Yeah, sack a bag head. over his head. He was very ugly in in the sack, so they put a bag over his head. So are we going with like movie <laughs> one, Jason Voorhees, or are we going yeah. like nineteen nineties, like Jason X in X, space? No. That's that's the one. you know what? I'll leave it up to your imagination. Okay. Uh, because some people, I don't know why, but think Jason X is. A better version of Jason, like the uh, Super Shredders and shit. I've never actually seen the movie, but I like, saw the mask and I the saw dude no, got like bigger and bigger and bigger as he time went on. Super Shredder from yeah, Trump. he turned like craziness. Like his outfit changed. Everything. But like original Jason Voorhees was I just Jason, a fucking psychopath with a mask on or a bag until over Jason, Jason Part Eight, Jason takes Manhattan. I think that was a, a pretty good staple for what Jason's capable. I'm going of. to imagine the Jason from the Friday the Thirteenth video game that came out last year. 
Yeah, that's Jason. Uh, like I thought you were going to say the NES version. Yeah, I was it. like, fuck you, he no, wins. No. <laughs> game over. <laughs> Jason 8, you know, Jason take, takes Manhattan is basically the Jason from the game. He can teleport. You can't okay. get away from him. Uh, and pretty much you're fucked if he wants you. You can box Unless him all Unless you have his mom's sweater, then he won't do anything. I don't even know what fucking city they're from. I don't know where, where she died at. Crystal Lake, bruh. I'll be inside Macy's Google garden it. sweaters like a bitch. I heard there's a pokey stop there. Let's check it out. But, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> we got Jason. And to me, right. these two are so close. Jason and Michael Myers are so close in power. It's very, Now, very Michael hard. Myers, is he is he like a monster? Because did yes. he start off as being like a, a psychopath as well? He started off being a psychopath, but he's, he's in a tangible world uh, wherein he's actually being held... In a mental institution, when he once he gets out, for some odd reason, he's so crazy that traditional means of killing don't work on him. Uh, okay. So he's been shot multiple times. So he's doing he's PCP or something. Something is <laughs> he's on he's juicing. because nothing H-D-H. that they've ever done to this guy, and and he's actually uh, transported his spirit into a young a little girl, and All she right. became a killer. So he's Freddy, Freddy, Freddy Krueger, right? Freddy Krueger, he's pretty much just got, he invades your dreams and he's got the glove thing. I'm going to pull Freddy Krueger out. I don't think he's got what it takes. Wait, I don't wait. think, I don't he think Jason, Jason Voorhees. Freddy versus Jason. He I, did. Did he win? He didn't lose. At the very I don't end think of the movie, won. it showed Jason holding his, because Freddy oh, was Well, that's fucking. disappointing. They, they had a movie called Freddy versus Jason and it was a draw. Bro, yes. you'll have a better chance of finding out who shot first, Greedo or Han Solo, well, before you figure out who won very, Jason versus Freddy. All right, fuck that. I don't care about the movie. I don't care about canon. I don't give a shit. When I look at Jason Voorhees versus Freddy Krueger, I don't think Jason Voorhees really gives a shit about nightmares. Like, I just don't think it affects him. He so I'm going to say Freddy, Fre- most of Freddy Krueger's power, just not working. You mother... Pinhead, though, man, isn't that guy like a demon? He's from hell, yeah. He's from hell. They have like yeah. telekinetic powers and shit. Like he was like closing Dude's doors on people. Or... Yeah, and those chains come from out of the, just the darkness of the room. Is Chucky Fucking also a demon? Just appetite in... to asshole. Is Chucky also a demon? But he's inside like that the body of a doll. A yeah, demon. he picked he's a, a he's really a murderer. He's a he murderer. Did, he did a spell and he uh, jumped into the body of this little good guy's doll, and he's been tormented. He's he's basically limitless as well as as far as power can't be killed. So it's an right. awful host pick. The predator. I'm going to go with <laughs> he can be killed. We've seen Arnold do it. Arnold's not even a monster. I mean, no, Predator is badass. I wouldn't want to fuck him up. I wouldn't want to fuck with him. But Whoa. I think Predator is done. I don't Arnold's think he's making not a it. monster? Have you seen the size of that guy's biceps? <laughs> They're pretty monster-esque. He's like... a monster by human <laughs> proportions, <laughs> but by Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, like <laughs> supernatural... Supernaturally, you, he's not a monster. He's not. You see what happened to that he's not invited to the, the monster shot match. Him in the with that laser. It turned into a fucking. He melon. did not go to the graveyard bash. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think Predator. I don't think Chucky, and I don't think Freddy Krueger make this list. I think the real, the real decision is between Jason, Michael Myers, and Pinhead. And Pinhead's a goddamn demon. Like, okay. what can't Pinhead do? I, I think agree the with you. In this conversation. Fuck I that. agree with you to a Predator, certain Predator's extent. Predator's staying in this shit. I agree with you to a certain extent. Um, what if Jason Voorhees? What if you like? What if you put him put him down? What if you put him to sleep? I mean, it is just a physical body. Well, like a, a chokehold. So what, what if? What if you just injected him with? with Remember, they brought Freddy to the real world in that movie. We're talking yeah. about fake. Narratives. How anyway. many Jason movies is there? Don't let Brian run this shit. This is There's a been like 15 Wonderful. Jason movies. The guy just keeps coming back. You can't kill him. Freddy, too. So hear me out. Uh, when's my, the last my, time they made a Freddy I movie? I want to say Jason many, Okay, This is how we solve but if, it. But if you have the sweater, he doesn't touch you. If you have the sweater. <laughs> so if one of Chad these guys had the sweater, had his mom's but he had it wrapped sweater. around his waist and he got fucked up. Put, put the, the sweater on Predator. <laughs> but I don't think the any of these guys are. Cognitive enough to to know about the sweater, like so. I mean, like I'm with Briar here. I think it does come down between Jason Voorhees, Pinhead, but then Michael Myers isn't that much. He's the like, same as Jason. He's kind of the same as Jason. Like he can do a lot of the same stuff. Whose like, mask is scarier? But like, whose mask is scarier? A hundred percent, Jason I go, Voorhees. Oh, really? no, William, go Shatner, Michael Myers. William Shatner's face is way scarier. 
No, dude, he's the price line negotiator. All right. He also whipped everybody's scary. ass in Star Trek. You remember he jumps from the side and it hits you and knocks everybody down. That's cool and all, but like Jason Voorhees has a hockey mask, dude. And now every time I see okay. a goalie, I get Jason freaked out. Jason carries an axe. Michael Myers carries a knife. Yep. I'm going with axe guy. Axe nope. guy wins. Fair Michael enough. Myers is fucking brutal. And he's like six foot eight. He'll grab yeah, Jason's I, little mask off. Pull give his Jason like, a couple more movies. He'll get up there. I'm going to the comments. <laughs> I want to hear what the people watching are saying. Yo, give him some HGH and he'll be up there. Like, don't worry about it. Like, so, uh, get Gray him Fox. juicing. But uh, Fox says that he thinks Predator will nuke them all and no one will win. See, and that's the thing, too. Like, who cares? Predator... They all come back to life in the next movie. Extreme Dan said that Jason went to hell and came back. Just saying. Yeah, okay. but there's multiple predators. So Jason predators. got an advantage over, has an advantage over Pinhead. Uh, Gray Fox said that Freddy did drown Jason to invade his dreams. Yeah, but Great like, hear, me, hear me out, though. There are an infinite. An unknown amount of predators. It's not just one predator. So, like, what if homie calls in backup? You see the Dude, new one from list, the new movie? It's like Wilson, 12 feet tall. I don't know if you read the list, but it says the predator. There is <laughs> one predator. <laughs> and the predator was killed <laughs> by Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> he killed, he killed himself. If, it, if it bleeds, we can kill it. It does not say a predator or predators. It says the predator. And that... There is only one predator to choose from. <laughs> but that one predator can call in the homies for backup. Anyone that Jason calls, anyone that Freddy calls, they're going to be like, no, fuck you. Like, you remember the last time I ran into you? Look, the other I'm, predators are going to show up. If I'm <laughs> if I'm wondering who wins in a fight, Sweet Dick Willie or the Atlanta Anaconda, it does not enter into the equation who's got more friends to back them up. I am just putting these two motherfuckers together <laughs> in uh, in the octagon and That's seeing who's going to win. <laughs> it doesn't matter how many predators there are. We're only talking about the predator. So you're, you're saying it's not even an option that he could he could call it, that, that more could potentially Eric, show up. No, that's a bitch move, Eric man. Brock, you don't Eric call Brock. in your friends when you're in a one-on-one? It's Eric a bitch Brock, move. Interesting <laughs> dynamic. He asked about the Xenomorph from Alien, but you got to remember that an alien versus predator, the xenomorph were kind of just to play things for the predator. They released like 50 of them, and yeah. one predator would go kill them all. So I don't think that that would even really equate. And Extreme Dan for, for Briar, he said to let you know that Jason doesn't use an axe. He uses a fucking machete. He's using an axe and a couple. Still he uses whatever bigger is than available. a kitchen knife. He, he used a sleeping bag, and it was like He's the, used the a knife. most awesome kill ever. That girl was <laughs> yeah. in a sleeping bag. He picked it up and swung it against the tree. <laughs> Gangster. Jason is versatile in his weapons. He's used a knife, an yeah. axe, a machete, a sleeping bag, like Beasley said. I've seen him do some shit with rope. I have seen him do a sub-zero fatality of uppercutting someone's head off. Head off, yeah. That was important you... when the black guy was boxing him. And he backed yeah. him all the way up to the edge of the building. And he said, oh, I'm so tired now. Take your best shot. And Jason didn't even uppercut it. He said, ding! And the guy all right, all right. fell off the trash can. Side note, has anybody seen American Gods on, I think it's on Stars? The no. TV series? Okay, it's worth checking out. It's fucking batshit crazy. There's a scene in it where a zombie girl kicks a dude so hard in his balls that his spine and skull shoot out the top of his head. What's the name of this? <laughs> American name? Gods. <laughs> that should be a Mortal Kombat fatality. Get on it. That what about Pennywise? Pennywise. Ooh, I don't it's know. A, it's an 80. He's from the 80s. Pennywise kind of got his ass whipped by a bunch of kids, though. No, he That's didn't. True. Yeah, he did. The way I remember it. He didn't by get a his slingshot. Ass Oh, he he lost from faith, but he's still not dead. He'll I remember them die. killing a giant spider, or a it's giant. It's called the fucking deadlights, and it was just an image that it kind of created for itself. It's a manifestation. Yeah. Look, I Can't literally die. just watched the movie. <laughs> <laughs> that dude got his ass whipped by a bunch of kids. I doubt. They're like nine years old. They whipped his ass. Have you seen the movie? Of course, I've seen. <laughs> Well, what happened at the end of the movie? Who won? You gotta see. You gotta see the follow up. <laughs> the follow oh, up, where he gets his ass whipped by a bunch one of, of listen, one of those kids belly middle aged men. And his head's gonna be in the damn refrigerator <laughs> talking to his friend. That don't sound like a win to me, Brian. That sounds like a prolonged loss. Real, real quick, side quest. All right, side quest uh -huh. here. Yeah, side quest. Out of the out of the ones listed, not even out of the which which eighties or back in the day, which one was the scariest to you guys? <sighs> It was uh, Chucky for me, dude. It I was Pinhead it. for me, I think. 
Yeah. They, they, they didn't show him enough, especially the first movie, which is very foreboding. Uh, Jason Freddy was, was funny. Huh? Right? Freddy was funny. Like, Freddy? Those movies had some comedy to them, and it, I always it, enjoyed it, that. Yeah. Robert England really played up that character. To me, the scariest one that would have terrified me the most as a child was Michael Myers. Because there was never a moment of laughter. It was always foreboding. Fair he enough. knew exactly how to terrify you. You look down the street and see a motherfucker standing next to a library behind a tree and not moving. You're like, what the fuck is up with this guy? He this had guy. the creepiest music, too. Yeah, 100%. and that mask. You see that mask and this guy is like six foot eight walking in your house. Every woman dead. Ass cheeks everywhere. Jason, the Friday the 13th movies, even when I was a kid, they were so fucking bad. That they never scared me. Like they were, they were just so shitty. <laughs> like there was entertainment value in how bad they were, but they didn't scare me. Freddie did have some. Michael comedy. Myers, though, that first movie, like I saw it just a couple years ago. That like was on, scary. they played it during Halloween, and I sat down and watched it. It was actually the first time I'd ever seen it, and I was like, I was impressed. This is actually a decent movie. Like it's That's a good. there is legitimacy to the filmmaking in that movie. Freddy, I thought was funny. Pinhead scared me, but I haven't seen him as an adult. Chucky never scared me. The Predator was more of an action movie. Chucky never scared you? No. Nah. The first, the first child was Puppet terrible. Master ruined Chucky was... My, my life. Because, like, here's my problem with, like, why Chucky was the scariest for me as a kid. Was because I didn't have you life-size had, statues you had my of buddy Jason. in the corner looking at That's you what while I'm you saying. were sleeping. I, I didn't have life-size Jason my Voorhees buddy. statues. I had my sister had dolls, and I had stuffed animals and things. And it was ter- it, the the idea of one of those coming to life was terrifying. And Chucky was a little fucker too. He wasn't just creepy; he was very distasteful and rude at the same time. But I feel you on the Freddy Krueger thing, Briar. Like. As I got older, like Jimmy said, Freddy became more funny. Yeah. So, like, my, my favorite kill, obviously, was where the dude fell asleep playing video games or something, and he put him in the video game. And yeah. he's like, hey, stoner, this is your brain on drugs, and had, like, the egg in there or whatever. Like, that, yeah. was, that was my favorite one. I think that evolved over time with Freddy. I think the same thing happened to Chucky over time, right? Is like, The first one was really scary, but as as that series progressed, yeah, he became more right. of a comedy figure almost. Mm-hmm. Like He still killed people, but it was more about you know the one-liners and stuff like that, right? Ooh, right. Candyman was a really good, scary movie. It was before my time, but I do want to give a shout-out to Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Those motherfuckers are some creepy-ass little bitches, man. <laughs> Fucking hate clowns. All right, All right, so we got. We got so to we gotta make a decision here. Yeah, uh, I think my vote has to go to Jason. Michael Myers. Yeah, no, I'm changing. It. I'm going. I'm going to agree with you, Beasley. Jason, man, I don't know. In a one-on-one fight, Jason versus Michael Myers. That would never end. They can't die. Yeah. How many? Like, who's got more movies? Uh, Jason. I'm going the with new- Jason. I'm going with Jason. Look, Jason X is one of those movies. There's Although Michael Myers has a new movie coming out, doesn't coming he? Coming out with uh, what's her face. Uh, so so it's more relevant. That dude's still fucking alive. Jason, we haven't seen hiding or tail of him since the last time he got killed. So you might be actually dead this time. He got that paycheck from that movie, and he was out. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's on fucking, vacation. He's fucking. <laughs> he's fucking. He's using his. Uh, uh, I don't know what those things are called. <laughs> <laughs> he's sailboarding board, in the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god he bought um, a private island <laughs> he's good to go <laughs> plus Rob Zombie never remade a Jason movie he made the Michael Myers movie and it was fucking good the first one and now they got a new movie coming out with uh, what's her name um, the chick from the original uh, Halloween uh, Jamie Lee Curtis yeah she's she's a grandmother now yeah he's coming after her and she's gonna end up having to kill him again wasn't she she's in the last abnormally one too? long neck wasn't she in yeah. the last one no, too she's no. in H2O H2O H2O. And that's, that's an anagram for water as well. Yeah. Um, Thanks. <laughs> when, what Sam, was the last one that came out? The last one was Rob Zombie's uh, Halloween 2, the oh. remake that he had created. Which was with good. The girl who screamed. Man, if a woman, if Kim Basinger and Batman, if you can outscream her in a movie, I don't ever want to see the shit again. This little girl was screaming when the ice cream truck went by. I, I was like, oh, it's too much for my ears. I'm more afraid of the when she's in front of the camera. Ah! Shut up, bitch. He's not even killing you. <laughs> All right, I, I'm going to go with you, BC. I think you're right. I think Michael Myers is going to take this. 
Good it's, man, Brian. It's a tough one for me because Hellraiser can do like some like borderline like summoning spell type stuff. You know, yeah, what I mean? yeah he can summon the the the, <laughs> the the demons from hell. The dogs he can summon. He can summon. How did they chain. beat? How did they beat Pinhead? Yeah, you have hmm. to uh, solve the puzzle of the box. Oh, so no. a fucking Rubik's cube decides? Nah, dude, it's it's fucking Michael. Oh, Michael I am Myers. It, fucked. If, <laughs> if your life decides on a, well, dude, I'm I mean, sorry, Michael Myers is not figuring out a Rubik's cube. You're that is not happening. <laughs> Pinhead wins. <laughs> that's like, that's like, <laughs> Michael Myers is like looking at that thing like fucking six hours later. It's like he hasn't well, even moved. Well, Brian, <laughs> He's trying to take it apart. It. If you think about it, all He's these to take guys, it apart, all these dudes have like connections to the demonic in hell. Pinhead <laughs> is a minion from hell and he takes you there. So yeah. uh, still probably like, kill all of them. Pinhead, you know, Pinhead can definitely do some damage to Michael Myers, but Michael Myers can't do shit because there's no way he's figuring out that Rubik's Cube. He's got to run and figure out the Rubik's Cube the whole time. He ain't running. You seen Michael Myers? He he briskly walks when he really wants he to kill. He needs to team I, I up. He, he trucks, right? He's a trucker. Yeah. He, he kind of... A hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, he... <laughs> just... Okay. That was like, probably like he was rolling up in a caddy, is what it looked like. Uh, so what if he? So it, what you're saying is Jason would have to team up with Michael Myers because one would have to fight while the other solves the Rubik's cube. No, he just needs to get inside that truck for maximum overdrive and have the Rubik's cube so he can get away from Hellraiser while he tries to figure it out. He was in a mental institution, so it's a good possibility he's a Rubik's cube savant. So does Pinhead win? I think so. I think so. I think the Rubik's think... Cube just... Uh, yeah. <laughs> those chains, I mean, if all those... If you've seen the movie, you guys saw what the chains do to you. They hit you from every, up your ass everywhere. So you got mm. 30 chains grabbing it's you. It's just like Cox Cable. Cox Cable. <laughs> just when you least expect it, you get fucked from every direction. Cox Cable, right we model our... Woo! <laughs> yeah, Cox Cable, where we model our business after Hellraiser. Yes. <laughs> All right. Like, yeah. s- s- I I know we're we're probably getting long here, but what is the best horror movie you've ever seen? Like, what? Or maybe I'm gonna word that slightly different. What's your favorite horror movie? Uh, Not a Living Dead, 1990. 1990. Why yeah. is that? Uh, uh, directed by Tom Savini. Uh, I'm a, and he was the the original makeup designer for George Romero's original and Dawn of the Dead, which is crappy. Even though Dawn of the Dead that came out in, in the, the late 90s, early 2000s was a much better overall horror movie. Uh, I can watch the 1990 version with Barbara and um, Ben over and over again. For some reason, it, it just does something for me. Uh, I love the original story. I love the way that it was crafted. It's very... Just foreboding and terrifying, and I've had a recurring nightmare in that house uh, since I was a little kid. It's not the scariest movie I've ever seen, but it's scary enough. And every time I watch it, I get creeped out. Of to me, the ultimate fear is to see dead things that are dead without any explanation coming for you. To me, there's really nothing else that can be more terrifying than that. I wouldn't care if it was animals, but to see something that you know is not breathing, not uh, you know, taking from the life force and something else is powering it and all it wants is your destruction. I can't in my mind imagine anything more terrifying than that. And uh, Tom Savini's film, well, which was, of course, taken after the original, really cap- captured that that feel and, and the aesthetic and the turmoil, that the human turmoil that goes on in a situation like that where your back's against the wall, you just want to live and you don't care about anything else and you're trying to save your family and all hell what? breaks loose. My, you guys are going to fucking hate me for my killer class so, space. <clears throat> as a kid, it was anything. Anything scared the shit out of me. Um, what was I? About 16, 17? Yo, Pet Cemetery was a scary Great one. Film. That one was pretty scary. What was the little boy's um, name? Gage. Uh, Gage. Gage. What was the name of the cat? That was- church. Uh, oh, it was church. That's right. Uh, dude, that's a good memory. Um you guys are still gonna hate this answer. When I was like sixteen, seventeen, it was the movie that scared, that impacted me the most. After watching it, was the Blair Witch Project, and I hate to say that because, like, obviously we know it's fake. Once we it's saw that chick, good. once we saw that chick on the Steak and Shake commercial a week later, we found out that the movie was that it wasn't actually them. There is a lot of lore around that in that area, but like the actual film itself was not real. But that was one of the first times that that had been done in film. 
Yeah, found was that, footage, the, that, was, that was the the first found footage film that ever really made it big. Yeah, so there was like, and this wasn't when everyone had a good internet, like like easy access to internet. It wasn't on everyone's phone, so you could be like, oh, let me just Google it real quick. Like, so everyone was talking about it. Is it real? Is it not real? All this stuff. That was probably the one that impacted me the most. But like, I would have to, I would have to say that, and then like, scream. I love Scream. Oh, um, God. Me too, man. Yeah. Scream is good. just great classic fun. Oh, my God. I'll be right back. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. All those people in that movie got fucked in life. After and that. those that's Sam's favorite horror films. Like, she loves Halloween. Like, my that's her never thing. Seen like, that. yeah. She you know. That is her thing. Like, Scream, Halloween, Freddy, Nightmare on Elm Street. Scream was fun because it, it kind of it was like a send up of horror movies, too. Mm-hmm. It, it, it served. It played on the, you know. Yeah, it's had two masters. And it, it did both good. It it was a good horror movie, but it also did a good job of, you know, kind of sending up horror movies. I like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. All right. Um, so, uh, Hellraiser wins. Pinhead. Uh, my favorite horror movie of all time. I was gonna say Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. Haven't seen it. Ooh. Which it's less a horror movie to be honest with you than a comedy, but it's yeah. well worth watching. It's it's a. Is it like Shaun of the Dead? Uh, a little good? bit, yeah, yeah. I it's would say like it's funnier than Shaun of, Shaun of the Dead. I got that on my phone. That's one of my favorites too. Yeah, it's really it's, uh, but I think Cabin in the Woods from 2012, I think is going to be my guy. That what I liked about Cabin in the Woods was they had like they had the straight horror movie at, for like the first 30 minutes, right? And then you Turn start to. Sci-fi. Yeah, you start to kind of get this twist with like Bradley Whitford. Is that his name? I like in, the, that in so long, like right. underground, and they're kind of like controlling the monsters. You don't really know what's going on, and then the movie kind of progresses. And there's there's some comedy to it. They also kind of make an explanation for it, which I really appreciate. It. I really enjoyed that movie. Like well, I don't like Cabin in the movies. Woods. That was really good. Yeah, Hold Cabin on. in the Woods. Because I'm thinking, am I thinking of just Cabin Fever? That Eli Cabin Roth Fever. Film? Yeah, yes, I think. Yeah. That's that what I had to. I had to look it up because I couldn't remember the name okay. of it. Okay, I just the remember first him. One I came in, like, What's the guy's Cabin name who plays Thor? He was in Cabin in the Woods. He yeah, died Chris early. Hemsworth. Hemsworth. Yeah, that was a really good movie. I'll Beautiful. Check it moment. out. I haven't seen. Oh, you it. haven't seen that? Oh no, man. I'll yeah. check it out soon. But you got like you got guys in the control room like betting on who's gonna yeah, die who's gonna first die and wow. stuff. It's really funny. And, and basically, what you do in the cabin uh, unlocks different monsters from different places, different genres. <laughs> yeah, that's and, right. and basically, the whole thing is. The whole thing is to keep the devil from taking over the earth. Yeah, and they got like they got these like kind of like little experiments going all over the world, right? It's really like they got like they got like the ring happening in Japan and yeah. they got, like all sorts mm-hmm. of weird shit happening all around I the world. It's really I can't make a part two of that movie. It, I'm gonna have to check so it out. At the end, the devil got out. Yeah, because remember, she got she got away. No spoilers, but yeah. <laughs> Only six years old. Sorry, but I'm the Wilson never saw it. I'm sorry. No, no, I did, dude. I, you know me. I'll forget about it five minutes from now. I'll be like, "What man? What movie?" <laughs> so yeah, don't worry. Oh about yeah, stuff. the new John John Krasinski movie, A Quiet Place, is really good. John Krasinski. I've heard that's good. good. Yeah, Jim I've from heard The Office. Really good things. Great, great, great movie. And he actually plays the the film. He plays alongside his actual wife in real life and My, his two daughters. So we watched was, the we watched it like the new version of it. Uh, that was last week. Uh, me and the wife did. And she's like, I really want to watch this movie. Watch it with me. I'm like, I'll watch it in daylight only. (laughs) (laughs) So we did. We watched it the next day during the day. And fuck, that movie was scary, man. Like, I don't like when they put kids in danger. Like, it just, it, for sure. Yeah, well, Georgie got fucked. I I just don't like that. Yeah, Uh, right right. off the bat, Georgie gets, like, basically eaten right up the, right off the bat, graphically, like, really graphic. So it sets a precedent, like, these kids could die at any fucking time, and all, even though I knew the story, like I, I don't know, like what are they, they might switch it up, right? <laughs> uh, before we leave, real quick, I want to give a shout out to my uncle Eddie's back in Ohio. But when he visited, you know, I love horror movies, and me and my kids do too. Even my five year old, if we could watch horror movies all day, that's what we would sit and do. And so we watched uh, Grave Encounters, which came out in 2011, I believe, and that's one of the movies I've had on my phone for years. And so I loaded it up in the living room, and Ed came and sat down and. He's watching it with us, and I told him, of course, it's a found footage. It's really happened, so he's really into it. Then he starts to see the shit that's happening in this mental institution. He's jumping all over the couch. This guy's 60, 66, jumping back, 
And then he ended up, I let him sleep in the office, but he went and got his pillow and had to take Nova's bed. And, and Nova and Nina had to sleep together because he had to fucking stay in their room. Every time I get up, he's still sitting up on the bed watching TV. Afraid to go to sleep. 67. Wouldn't <clears> that be a lesson, Briar? Get your shit together. You don't want to be scared at 67. Mental shit. institutions I are scary. I just don't watch horror movies. <laughs> smart, smart man. Mental <laughs> institutions are scary, dude. There's something to be said about a place with like unstable minds that are unhappy and like the kind of energy that that leaves behind. I've been in an abandoned one. I think I told you guys about that. We spent like 12 hours in there one night. Yeah. 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 Me and a bunch of friends allegedly broke into this old insane asylum and uh, hung out the entire time. I don't recommend it. It's terrifying. Yeah, I, uh, I wouldn't do it. I'm too black for that take shit. Take a hard uh, pass on that. <laughs> and, and, and Gary... I'll wait for you guys mention. at uh, Robin, oh. <laughs> Robin, <laughs> Robin down the road. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have a couple of beers. <laughs> be heavy Metal guy. Mama. We love you too, and we love horror movies. You and me, Heavy Metal Mama. We need to stream and watch a movie together oh sometime. Uh, but you, Gary said, two girls, one cup count as a horror movie. That's yeah, nice. that's, that's it sticks does with count. you. <laughs> that sticks with it, you. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's some shit you yeah. can't unsee. I, I think actually that. this... The, a video Gary. game actually is the most scared I've ever been though. Have you guys ever played Outlast? Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit, man. That that That's game, scary. I think I got an hour into that game and I was having like heart palpitations. I was so fucking freaked I don't out. like stuff you can't fight back <laughs> in. The stuff yeah. that you can only Yeah, you don't get a gun or nothing, man. Mm, I did not like that game <laughs> one bit. Was it Outlast? Gary, was it the name of that? Our viewers, okay? Now these people can't sleep at night thinking about two girls in one cup. <laughs> get you toxic, Gary. Even when, oh, when that's we don't just, see you. Dude, Toxic. that's this great American hero. He'll be fine. He'll sleep just fine tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that's my boy. <laughs> oh, fucking Gary. <laughs> of course, he had to come in and drop the two girls, one cup bomb. What a, of course he did. What a motherfucker. <clears throat> what do you think, guys? Does it feel good to be back? To get feels another good. under the belt? It feels good. Guys, so, next Sunday guys, at four. Unfortunately, we'll miss next Sunday's show because me and Wilson will both be in Florida. Um, so we'll, maybe we can do like Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, yeah, you guys let me know. But if we, if we don't get a show done next week, we'll definitely get one in the week after. I kind of like this Monday thing. Was this? Don't know if I'll be getting off early next in two weeks. Yeah, all right. That's we'll, true. We'll talk about know. that offline. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk, talk about, about that offline. <clears throat> but yeah, like Briar said, we'll be at Guardian Con. Follow me on Twitter at Ryu Wilson. I may be doing some periscoping so you can see me touch Briar's butt. And maybe get like a five minute revolver session on Twitter. Well, a two out of three revolver session on Twitter. A little periscope. Maybe maybe I'll just come in with periscope, throw a briar off guard and be like, Hey, we're live, say something. Just say hi to me if you're gonna do a revolver. Wilson's Please. just gonna film him getting me high. That's this <laughs> gonna be all stoned out. Uh, like, look at this motherfucker. Uh, real quick before we leave, Wilson. Show people your uh, your bar. You can line see the joint you. still in his beer. Oh. So, what did I say earlier when I what were we talking about when I said I'll pass the torch on to you? We said something about pass the torch and I lit this big ass <laughs> burnsomatic propane because butane is the devil's gas. So you want to go with propane. That's, your... That's right, Bobby. That's, That's right, right, Bobby. Bobby. Butane is the devil's gas. <laughs> so we're gonna find you guys. We're, do your Let's do your sign off. Beastly here. Gamer Max on Twitter, YouTube, Beastly Gamer, or uh, in Georgia someplace. Come and find me. <laughs> it's an open invitation. I'm Briar Rabbit. You can find me in Florida at the Tampa Convention Center on Friday and Saturday. I hope as many of you who can come will come and say hello. I really want to meet you guys. Like I love it's it's actually a really incredible experience to meet somebody in real life who you only know through like emotes and names and icons and like Twitter pics and stuff like that. It's really fucking cool to actually like stand there and have a a face to face conversation with somebody that you've only really like had interaction with online. I, I like. I, I hope to see as many That's of you. That's six down hours there. away, dude. Come down, man. Come down. Come down. I'm excited to see everyone. If you see me there, I stand out like a sore thumb. Don't be shy. Come up. Say what up. <clears throat> Tell me how much you love or dislove the show. Either way, come say hi. Four hundred twenty. Yeah. Four hundred forty-two miles. We're having. Uh, we're having dinner on Thursday night. 
Uh, I know Wilson, Hove. Uh, who else is going to be there? Some other Resolute boys. So I think like uh, Wenny, uh, my boy Marcus, Mr. Tom Foolery mm-hmm. is going to be there. Except we'll probably just be trading Pokemon half the time when we roll up. Like, I cannot wait. Like, me Sometimes. and him. Awesome. You guys are going to be right on the water, too. I'm going to oh, yes. rally so many people to a raid when it pops up. Like, you're just going <laughs> to see me walk forward, Brian, and like, let's go. And it's <laughs> it's going to be amazing, man. But we hope to see as many of you out there as we can. Come yeah. say hi to both of us. Yeah, come say hi, too. Don't be afraid. Yeah. Like, if I'm if I'm running by and it looks like I'm in a rush, don't be afraid to say hi. Like, Same. It's, it's what I'm in there for. It's well, what, that, what happens if they say, hi, Brian? You're supposed to only say hi. Got to go. <laughs> One word limit. <laughs> One word limit. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, we'll, we'll be busy because we'll, we got um, we got a lot of stuff going on that day, or both of those days. But it starts on, just it starts don't be day? afraid. Don't be afraid. It starts on Friday, uh, ends on Saturday evening. Uh, we're also... I know this is the wrong podcast, but there'll be a DCP like meetup on Saturday evening. That's going to be at the pub in Tampa. The place is named the pub, um, which is going to be amazing. Uh, I can't wait, man. Like this is highlight of the year kind of stuff coming up. And, uh, uh, I'll probably take it easy on Thursday night. I'll probably take it easy on Friday night, but Saturday I'm going to get fucked up. <laughs> Let's go. Me too. I can't wait. It's going to be a good time. It's my first Guardian Con, so this is going to be me experiencing this all yeah, the Yeah, this is going to be a good one. They got like the arcade set up. Like oh. I think this is going to be it's going to be next level. Next level stuff. Awesome. Oh, and uh make sure that you are watching Guardian Con even if you're not donating. Even if you're not even really watching it, just have a window open on Guardian Con right now just to help them boost the visibility of the charity event, you know? Just leave the word open. Uh, tweet it out, you know, yep. Twitter, Facebook, whoever whoever you know. Let them know, tell, man. Tell That's a friend a you may thing. have $1 or $5 that they could, you know, in turn tell someone else about who may have a dollar or two. It's, yeah. it's uh, symbiotic. So, all right. We done, guys? Is I think we're it? done. Yeah. Is that it? That's all right. It. See you later, guys. We'll see you sometime in the near future. See you at Guardian Con. For sure. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>